So, with this session, there is no fancy introduction, cutscene, or anything like that. Instead, we are picking up exactly when we left off before. Hi, Fraser. That's Jesus me. got off of a phone call with a frantic woman. Yes, I did. So, what are you doing? Your initial plan originally was to make your way to the front counter. Mm. Are you still doing that? Uh, yes. Fraser will continue his way towards the front counter. See what's okay. going on. You proceed to walk at a fast pace. Let me get you over there. make your way down the hallway you very much realize yeah it's starting to make a little bit more sense how would a place like this ever stay open uh Fraser will pull out his pistol but keep it behind him for now okay Gotcha. Up the front. Got it. Continue his yeah. way up to the front. That gear's doing decent Make up at the your moment. Way to yeah. the front counter and, uh, the only problem will be like talking because we might robot a bit, but that's. I'm not certain. Shit. And there's no sort of like bell or anything like that to let like let somebody know that you're um, here. Um, real quick. Shape's coming across on roll 20 again. God damn it again. Yeah. Okay. Um. With that put, set it to, I don't know if you've already had this, but there's a section that says, I want to broadcast to others and I want to receive from others. Ian, you might want to turn that to disable and you might, uh, she, if you might want to just turn both of them to disable if you don't have that. Yeah, I did that earlier. I'm not sure why it turned back on. Receive. Anyway, should okay. be better now. I, I turned off receiving, so we should be good all around okay. now. Worst case scenario, we might have to re just refresh but all right. all right we fix it and now we're back into the action throwing it towards you there's no sort of ringer there's no so like sort of like you know a bell to call so to let somebody know that's in the back that you're up here it's just nobody's there uh cory will just kind of yell out hello is there anyone you there yell, yell that out then you wait a few seconds, and you hear nothing, no sort of sound or anything, just kind of this eerie silence in the front. Does this door have a sign on it? That door says staff only. He will go, he'll walk up to it and try the handle. Uh... Yeah, it seems to be like another like key door or key card lock. It it doesn't open. Similar to your doors, but you need you need a obviously a staff, potentially a staff card to get actually through that door. Well then, give me a general perception check real quick. Perception. There we go. 19. So, the door out behind the counter doesn't seem to have any sort of, like, actual key card lock or anything like that. Is comparatively there... <laughs> to this one. Is there any way back there besides climbing over the counter? No, doesn't appear, though. It looks like... The counter is, like, a couple feet up. It's, like, one of those ones where, like, it's pretty much up to your chest, where you're, like, looking kind of down at the person across, so you're, you're gonna have to hop over. <laughs> Looks like Corey is hopping over. Yeah, I you, you don't have to make a check for that. You're you're fine. <laughs> you you make your way over and hop over the counter and just kind of land on this other side. You see a few paper kind of crumbled up in the corner there. Obviously, there's the computer here. 
this phone actually looks like it's plugged in. I'm curious. Are there any voicemails on the phone? Ooh. Let me see real quick. Hmm. Yeah, you, you check it. And the only voice, you hit a button, and your own voice starts playing back from where probably when you were registering this, you could not get a hold of this phone number. So it does seem active, at least it was getting your voicemails that you left for this place. Where, does it, does it have like a call history? No. I mean, look, it's older tech, not sort of any call history that you can tell. It might be older might just be because it's an older phone. You're not sure. Um, if you want us to just roll a general tech roll to see your knowledge of, I guess, just phones in general, you can. Uh, sure. This is not going to go well because I think I still have my... I don't I don't think time has passed for you to drop those. Oh, wait, I'm, a... I'm only on stage two, so the uh, the intelligence checks don't apply, right? It's only, uh... Oh, stage, stage two. two. I believe so. Let me double check here. That it does affect or doesn't affect? Uh... Ignore the first negative modifier of the drunk status effect. So okay. that means so... you do... If you're at stage two, you're suffering that minus four with this roll. Uh, well... <laughs> Who knows? Mm. It's an old piece of junk. Probably not. Uh, is this cup of coffee like actively here? Yes. Does like it... I mentioned, section one, anything you see on the map is actively there and interactable with. Does it so... look fresh? Uh, no. It looks like whatever milk was put into it has kind of, like, risen up to the top and, like, separated from the coffee itself. Ew. Probably about a day or two. You did see the lady drinking some of the coffee before when you were in here, uh, you know, when you guys actively got here yesterday. Uh, what about the computer? Is there, uh, is there, like, a login to access it? Um... Let me double check. Yeah, uh, there is a login in particular. You can, it's it seems very old, so you could technically attempt to like backdoor your way into this computer with like admin overrides, etc. But that would be another tech roll. Uh, I'll try. <laughs> Mm. Yeah, you're you basically like old man, like take out your like with single pointer fingers, like try to <laughs> hit every keyboard slowly but surely, and then you hit enter and nothing happens. You're not saw... even sure what an admin account is on a computer, to be honest. <laughs> He's only 38, man. In anime rules, you're old, okay? <laughs> uh, well, he will make his way to this door. Okay. Keeping his gun, his pistol out behind him. Alright, this one does appear to be unlocked. There's a few things that you see when you enter this room. Firstly, you see a bag up here. A duffel bag on the front. You see a big safe there is kind of it looks like it might have been positioned against the wall but has been moved at some point and then there's a lot of assorted change all over this desk there doesn't appear to be anyone per se uh cory uh she's gonna do a once over of the room real quick to make sure there's no one there or anything sticking out. Okay. Give me a perception or investigation. I'm gonna guess what you're doing, and it would be perception. <laughs> yeah. Okay. 
Um, nothing in particular stands out to you? You don't really find anything, etc. Like, the description of what I gave you before, there's obviously, with you coming around the corner, there is file cabinets there, but, um, yeah. There's a few filing cabinets against these walls. Obviously, there's a few boxes. Like, everything that you see on the map is basically what you're able to pick up. Um, so, yeah. If you want to interact with each of, any yeah. of this thing, go ahead. Uh, Corey, we'll start with this duffel bag over here. Okay. As you open and look through the duffel bag. Immediately what you find is, firstly, several sets of clothes, primarily flora, flora, flora print, flowers. <laughs> um, similar to what that lady was wearing before, if you remember, she was wearing a very ugly uh, flower dress. You see a pair of keys. As you look through it as well, you find a um, a hunting knife as well that is kind of buried in one of the side pockets. Interesting. Uh, is there anything in this desk? No, it seems to be weirdly empty. Uh, is the safe locked? Yes. Very much so. Hmm. Alright. Cory will check the crates. So, you immediately, when you, like... They are kind of shut first off, but you could easily like take out one of your knives or something and like pry it open. Um, and you kind of look in there and it you immediately get, get hit by this like mildew esque smell. There's a lot of sheets, etc., stuff that you would normally find in hotels and stuff, but they just seem very old and just kind of hit that point of where they're kind of like decaying almost from where they've been sitting for so long. Mm. Real quick, what type of lock is on the safe? It is, uh... I, I'm not very familiar with locks, I will apologize. But it is not like a padlock or anything. It's one of the ones that you rotate to a number, rotate back, that mm. sort of thing. Okay. So it is possible. Don't know if it would be in Fraser's skill set, but it is possible to break the lock. Obviously, if you had the code, you probably could easily get you could get into it, but that's the issue with lock safes. Anything in this desk? Nope. It seems again oddly empty. All Besides right. a lot of a lot of pocket change on the front. Primarily like quarters, dimes, nickels. There's no pennies. Interesting. Uh, Corey will move on and check the filing cabinets. They also appear to be empty. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I meant to ask this when I was out here, but is there anything, like, behind the counter? Okay, give me a perception check. Yeah, this this is not hard to see. Uh, you find a shotgun strapped to the bottom of this counter. Um, Debra Barrel. It looks to be kind of old, loaded and ready to fire. Uh, Corey's just gonna grab that so it's not just sitting there. Okay. Uh, are these papers anything of importance? Okay, um, let me look at this. It's 
So they are, but give me an insight to see what you can make out of it. It seems to be some sort of drawings, but okay. Wow. The best that you can make out of it, it looks like drawings and crayon. There appears to be a smaller stick figure holding a hand of a taller stick figure. There's a few several of them that looks to be crumpled up and tossed to the side here. Uh, Corey will go back around this way and uh, unlock the door from this side. So he doesn't have to crawl over the counter again. Oh, right. Sorry. You also do find a key card underneath the counter there. There's, oh, there's okay. a few drawers, etc. So you, you can easily... It is basically what you end up finding is the master key to any of the doors within this facility. Hmm. So one of the ones that, you know, cleaning have that can just unlock any of the doors. Are you going to leave that door open? Or are you just going to shut it back? Uh, He'll leave it open. Okay. Corey's gonna do like a once over of this room to see if they have any like cameras in here as well. Okay, give me a perception check. From with that check, nothing that you can tell, at least nothing that's obvious. I will state, if there's any, like, if you're trying to piece together and want more clarity on anything, you can very much, like, roll insight, ask a question or something to get more, like, clarity of what it looks like. That's fully up to you. That's part of what insight is as well. All right, I'm, I'm going to try one time to see if Corey can... Crack this safe. I will note it is a sleight of hand check. Yeah, this will be fine. Yeah, you spend about a minute trying to like f fiddle around with it, like put your ear close up to the the safe trying to fit her and you spend about a minute and you, you get no progress you're not even sure if you were getting some of the numbers right it's out of your expertise to do so all right i think that's all Corey is going to do up front okay uh let me look at that old yeah Never mind. By the way, if you're ever wondering what these are, these are windows. If you ever see these on any maps, windows assets are hard, so this is what these little things are. A lot of the maps use them. So figured I would point them out. Okay, are you heading back to the room where the rest of them are? Yes. Okay. All right, Amelia, of course, you did your investigating before you found both of them and you proceeded to just kind of act casually not to throw off whoever might be watching on the other side. And then the door creaks open and you see Fraser entering in, holding a old shotgun. At this point, for the two people that are knocked out, at any point, you can just wake yourself up. That is up to you. Of course, if you don't after a while, the other PCs, feel free to wake yourself up, too. Your rest is A-OK. -okay. Take it away, Razor. I didn't find anything up front. It was a little odd, though. The desks and the filing cabinets up there were completely empty. Also, I found this under the front counter. He holds up the oh. shotgun. Huh. Uh, 
I think I found something in the bathroom if you want to come look at it real quick. Uh, show me what you got. Okay. Hushed voice. Um, there's nothing in here, but there's a camera under where Ace is sleeping, and there's one in the potted plant near the phone. Mm. I think he was in here when the phone was bugged. Besides the bug in the phone, there's a camera under Ace and one in the potted plant near the door. It might be best just to leave it act like we didn't find anything that's what I thought too I just wanted to let you know yeah it'd probably be best to go ahead and wake them up and start moving okay okay just don't mention where we're going cause you know you know That's Corey will kind of shake Ace. Oh, I'm up. I'm up, boss. What's up? We're getting Amelia out of here. Will... Amelia will oh, poke right. Dahi in the face. <laughs> oh, God, I think everything hurts. Uh, we're about to head out. Oh, lovely. Ooh, where are we going? Boss <sighs> said he'll discuss on the way. Alrighty. Yep. Gather everything you have in here. We have some important business to attend to. Yes, sir. Get in my knives. Alright, all. Get in my cards. Do -do -do. The most important. What about the crumbled donuts? You need that for a good mission. <laughs> oh yeah, get the donuts. They're in the pizza. You see, we fused them together. All right. The maniac. All right. I like the way you think. <laughs> Everybody, stop moving so I can copy over. Uh, <laughs> point of reference: Where are you going before you actively bring up this topic? Um, to Jennifer's house. Okay. Yeah, Jennifer, that's the one. I'm happy you remember her name. Yeah. You did just meet her. Uh, let me. However, I will note something, and as you guys are walking out, I'll just take you back to the. You make sure everything's good here. Okay. So I imagine you would at least attempt to start up your van. It's not starting. <laughs> uh, you guys could attempt to try to fix it, try to figure out what's with it. However, I will show you the outside before I place you down. If you want to do anything on this map, I will place you down. If not, we'll just move to you, Jennifer's house. Um, the Warren okay. household. Who here can hotwire a car? So, one thing I will note, there was a lovely brand new van or van truck that was out here this morning that you guys noticed that is gone however there is a different car here now which is an old rundown two-seater uh anyway. as they walk out uh Corey will kind of point out the car and just be like i think someone's here Not sure. Didn't see anyone. Is that one lady from the front here? There was no one at the front counter, but there are plenty of other rooms in the building. Mm, true. Alright, does... Ah. Is anyone here 
know how to fix a car. Is it like fixing a tractor? I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know if we can repair a car that's been fried. <laughs> well, uh, this is just supposed. There's a car over there with a perfectly good battery, and there's our car that's battery is kind of short. Well, supposing we might be able to salvage something. Alright, does anyone have any jumper cables, then? I, I meant more just taking their battery, but that would also possibly work. We need the keys for that car, though. Does anyone know how to hotwire a car? You could also just break the window. I, I mean, you need the keys I, to start the car. If we're just That's taking the... <laughs> I, <laughs> God, God. Squad B can't even <laughs> jump a car. <laughs> Alright. Well, like, what skill is it technically to, like, fix the car? Vehicle or tech? So those who have high decks will have some sort of vehicle knowledge just by how the system works. Oh, but, really? I could do a yeah. hobby. Oh, I can do it. Oh, no, hold on. I would... Ian, <laughs> are you going to activate oh. that? Yes, I'm activating no fun, no hobbies. Oh, boy. All right. What? Uh, I could use kind of use my extremely high decks. So... What do you declare in this hobby, my friend? Because I think you do have to declare what it is. Uh, car mechanics. <laughs> <laughs> That's a hobby. Car mechanics. You could have just gone with cars in general. Cars. Okay. So let me double check that memory real quick. Okay. All right, that's when the skill check is technically happening, but first you should probably investigate this car in front of you. Yes, we will investigate the car. Okay. I did paste you on the right layer, right? Yes. Okay. All right. As you move over, you very much can like see through the the windows of this. It's very trashed. There's just like fast food, etc. That is just in there. Um, you see some of uh, those chip bags you saw before. Hips, just empty wrappers of those all in the back of this. Hmm. Uh, the door does appear to be locked, so if you actively want to search through this vehicle, either you're going to have to have the keys or you're going to have to get creative. You know, I would smash the window if it wasn't going to set off an alarm. Do you think this car has an alarm? <laughs> That's a good question. That's up to you. I mean, you can te technically activate that memory as well if you uh, want to do that with Jimining of Lock as well. That, that's true. Yeah. And you would still get it off. I can only do that once per session, though, so if I did that here, I wouldn't be able to do it for the car. You are correct. Hmm. Correct me if I'm wrong, but weren't there a pair of keys on the counter when we were leaving? I, th th thank you. <laughs> I would have completely forgotten about that. Uh, Corey will run inside to grab those keys to see if they work on this car. The one in the uh, duffel bag? Yes. Okay. Um, oh, I thought there were some on, like, the front desk that I saw, like, on the found... actual map layer. There might. Let me double check. I don't believe so. I don't remember putting any in there. No, I just remember keys being mentioned. 
There's keys. There is several maps that do have keys on the map layer that you can see. But, it's uh, fine. In the end, it reminded me that I found keys in the duffel bag. Okay. There's several sets of keys here. Let me let me double check this. Here. Da, 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 da. Okay, when you try the keys, they do not work. These keys seem a lot nicer. It's hmm. the best way to put it. They don't seem to be much use on them. They must go to the truck. But then where would the truck Ah, oh, that makes sense. It does until you realize that the truck isn't here. Do, unless it's yeah. somewhere else. Do the keys... Um... Or it's a spare set of keys. Maybe. Yeah, uh, go in. Do the keys look like car keys, or do they look like they go to something else? It does look like car key. What? But... I mean, you supposedly tried the butt. I will note, it does kind of, it does not look, like, it doesn't have the symbol of what kind of brand of car is on it. It does look something like potentially a spare. But it does not work on this uh, rust bucket in front of you. Hmm. Yeah, I got what nothing. Do you want to know how to jimmy a lock? I don't. All right, what are we doing here, guys? Everybody's been idly standing in a parking lot. I'm lost when it comes to that car. I can try to fix the van though, I don't know how. You might be able to hotwire it. I don't know though. Never fixed the car before. Fix a tractor though. Fix a lot of tractors. I don't think that's how hot wiring works. I don't know how hot wiring works at all. Alright, Freddy, there you explains go. a lot. Yeah, Corey's gonna try to fix the van. Okay. Pop the front hood. You try to figure out what's wrong with it first, I imagine. So that would be an either yeah. vehicle or um, tech. Uh, so when do I pop the memory? Uh, before. When you're making a skill check. So okay. You roll so. a vehicle and then you roll a straight d20. All right, I'm going to pop it on this roll. Okay. Uh, vehicle. And then here's the D20. Okay. Damn. Yeah, so I'm, this actually looks kind of fun, you know? Something about the way the innards of the vehicle are. It's appealing to you, Fraser. Am I making this weird yet? I, is yes. it just me or does he look really entertained doing this? <laughs> God, like that's crack a crack of a smile. smile. <laughs> you know? <Not> the smile <laughs> again. I think All that right, this is my on. hobby. <laughs> so, with that, this is successful. So if you want to declare this as your hobby and change the memory you can, or you can just add it to the list. Um, or I can. That's up to you if you want him to become a car man you know uh, what anywho <laughs> you, you can have um, a moment to think about that but uh firstly what it primarily is the issue is not necessarily that the entirety of it is fried per se the issue that you discovered is during your fight battery did release a lot of electricity that probably went through the vehicle itself probably scorched some of the stuff inside etc but the main issue is he it looks like all of your battery went to full to empty because he was actively absorbing electricity from the battery itself so the main issue you have here is power so with that being said there's probably nothing that you can do to ju like do it without a new battery or another sort of power source So. What do you think, boss? Uh, we're either going to need to uh, get a new battery or find some jumper cables and another car. 
Oh, would you look at that? Another car over here that probably has a battery. Yes, yep. but are we going to set off an alarm popping the hood open? Does it really matter? Is anyone around? Well, you make a perception check. That was more directly towards like Amelia. All of us? Because oh, okay. she was the one that made the note, so I just went ahead and says, No, it seems about as dead as it was when you arrived the first time. There doesn't seem to really be much activity around this area. Or most of the town, really. I mean, there's nothing out here, but that car wasn't here earlier. There definitely does seem to be someone or something here. Okay. Who wants to volunteer Maybe. to help me pop the hood open and try to get the battery out? In one person. I could try both. Hey, sure, why not? Alright, oh, Ace is first. Oh, good, good. Uh, could give it a shot. Corey is going to toss the key card that he got, the master one from the front counter, to Amelia. Okay. Uh, just take a quick run through the building. Uh, you don't have to go through every single room. Just if you see any like staff rooms, check those, or if you hear any sounds. Okie dokie. This car is strange. We will handle the uh, car first. Okay. Well, it's definitely blue. Oh, God, why did it have to be you? <laughs> I mean, that's on you. <laughs> you had every. Oh, don't mind me. I'll just be bandaging my wounds over here a bit more. Okay. Sorry, I had to get the neat, deep notes within my notebook. All right. So, how'd you get in? So how'd you know what to do with the car? Well, I got uh, very bored when I was on my leave from the military. I guess I picked up a few car magazines. Oh, that's neat. Yeah. You know, maybe maybe it'll be my new hobby. Well, it's you definitely asked? something to get interested in. There's a lot of cars that you can fix in downtime. Is that you declaring your memory? Yes. Okay. We'll talk about that at a later point, but after this, it will be evolved into a memory based on cars. <laughs> All right. So, um, firstly, how are you guys are hand handling doing this exactly? You're going to break the window? What, what are you doing? Uh, first, let's see if maybe we can, like, jimmy the hood open. Uh, I would say that's probably, like... I wouldn't say that's necessarily, like, vehicle or tech. That's more like a sleight of hand of trying to get your hand under the hood. Most of the time, they have locking mechanisms in, in it. But who knows? Maybe it's not shut down all the way. Let's see how well you can get into it to open it up. So if one of you wants to do that and then support the other, you can do that. Or you, one of you can give advantage to the person rolling. Uh, what roll is it? Sleight of hand. Sleight of hand. I've got a pretty good sleight of hand. All right, I have no bonus in sleight of hand, so. You giving All him right. a badge, or that's uh, up to you. You can either give half of whatever you roll on your d twenty or advantage on him. What would you prefer, Ace? Uh, I don't really. I don't care. It's whatever you want. I'll just. I'll just give half. Right. Okay. Go ahead, both of you roll. Bruh. Wow. <laughs> That's right. a plus five to everything. <laughs> yeah, you, you begin to kind of like stick your hand under there, uh, wild card, trying to figure out and like Fraser, you put your fingers up, trying to get it up a little bit so he can get in there and maybe like fiddle with it enough to unlatch it. And what ends up happening is Fraser, you pinch your finger and then let go real quick which has it fall on his hands and pinch his <laughs> fingers it's painful oh sweet mother of cows oh, gosh dang it ah, uh, oh, that hurt. 
Are you okay? I'm okay. Whew. Maybe I can jimmy or maybe I can jimmy the door? You're gonna take the jimmy the door. I, I did imagine the downfall fall of this squad was breaking into a vehicle. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot hey, of Hey, we're factors. not technical people, man. Nope. I have a foreign vehicle. <laughs> Alright, Fraser, give me you can give me a sleight of hand, I suppose, or you can just give me a vehicle check. Well Maybe you've locked your Oh yeah, you've You got it. You've locked your keys in your car before at some point in your life. Um, so you... Fully struck. <laughs> you kind of go go into your bag and where you have some of your clothes in a hanger, you kind of pop the hanger, bend it weirdly, wildcard. You watch him as he just goes in here and he like starts shoving it down the window, like that little slit between the window and the uh, door. Fiddles around for a little bit, and then you hear a click, and then he opens the car door. Don't ask where I learned that. No nope. alarm has oh. gone off. All right. Do you guys do you want to search through this, or do you just want to pop the hood and like grab the battery? I think it'd be a good idea to investigate the car as well. Well, there are two of us. True. One does the. <laughs> one grabs the. Uh, Corey will pop the hood for him and just be like, I'm gonna check the car real quick, see if you can get the battery out. Okay. Right. Hello? Okay, uh, sorry, that was on my end. I was double-checking something. Uh, yes. So... Mainly what you notice in this vehicle in particular is there is rusted tools primarily. It's just kind of thrown in the back. There's a lot of trash in it. You 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 look through it and um, give me give me an investigation or perception check as you just kind of peer through this uh, vehicle. You can pot you can get the battery out easily, wildcard. That it's not gonna require you a check to remove the battery. <laughs> perception, okay. One thing is odd, or it's a little, kind of, it feels out of place. While everything is kind of rusted and dirty, you see in, like, the, uh, kind of move over some, like, fast food bags, etc., off the passenger seat, and you see a small key card. The key card reads... Let me... That's right. Uh, it does not read anything on it. However, it does not match the key cards per se uh, that you found before, uh, or in the building in front of you. Hmm. Uh, give me an intelligence check. Hmm, this isn't gonna be pretty. Oh, well, that was too bad. Okay. Um. That, that's that's fine. You you've done a lot of jobs before this key card in particularly looks like one that has been used and uh, used primarily so it's with the shape and design of it. it has a very unique shape and design and as you look at it the kind of the the symbols itself on it is kind of a very abstract form of what a just a uh, like a cherry um at first glance you would not notice it but that's what it is and that is the logo more or less for a company called Barry Inc. This company in particular, and knowing what you know about this town and everything, is the company that used to own the factory that was here in town that shut down uh, about five years ago. I would there be a key card for that in the car? That's a good question. You pocketing it? Yeah. Okay. 
All right. So now you guys got to make a very important check. So, for both you people that I don't think own vehicles, I could be wrong about Thrash, I'm not sure. Batteries are typically built based on size for different cars. So if you have a big giant battery like the one that would be in a van like this and try to shove it the other way around into that little car, it would not fit. I've had this issue before. However, vice versa, it doesn't fit in the slot necessary, but I necessarily, but I will let you guys roll a vehicle check or a tech check or something like that to see if you can at least jury rig it to potentially have the car start. Don't know if that will be a permanent solution, but it is a good enough solution to get this this van elsewhere. It would be a vehicle or tech. You can give advantage to one of each other, or you can just do the half. That's up to you. You say you had a four bonus on vehicle? Yeah. Okay, I do too. Let's just do a half. I'll I'll do the main role, and then you can do uh, supporting. Yeah. All right. Nice. Okay, so that's a 19. No, Basically, have to duct tape this in. <laughs> and just... Yeah, you, you get it up, and you're able to turn the van on, and this would be probably right around... Depending on what happens on the inside, is uh, we'll see what the others two are up to, and then we'll come back to you. I will say that probably is not a permanent solution, but you probably could get a trip or two out. Uh, when that car goes off, you're probably going to have to try to get it started again with another check until you find a battery or figure out another solution. But yeah. right now, we're going to go back to the other two real quick. Okay. So, Amelia, you enter in. Then you hear someone yell up and catch up to you. At first, it didn't look like Dahi was uh, going to come along, but then he catches the door as it about to close and pops in. Oh, you coming too? I might as well make myself useful. So I guess we just start with this room up here, huh? Yeah. Yeah, I might as well. double check or are you guys just kind of like opening the door and peering in how exactly are you going about this for this for my knowledge? yeah effectively okay yeah because i think we're only looking for people right pretty sure yep at least thems was the boss's orders <laughs> as you look in kind of peer in I'm not going to drag you out, but it uh, it looks to be another this kind of room similar to the ones that you guys are in. Just empty is the best way to put it. If you want to enter in, you can. If you don't, we can just continue back to the hall. I mean, that lets us see most of the room other than the bathroom. I will note, like, eh, just on base level sound, kinda... it doesn't sound like there's any, like, movement or anything in the room. It just looks empty. Oh, okay. Yeah, we'll probably find then. Yeah, we'd hear someone moving if they were in there. Like, if they were trying to get out of the way of the door. Yep. First one's empty. Of course, that one's ours. Oh. Gonna nuke the old freighter. You didn't see anything. I was about to say, oh, boss man, how'd you get in here? All, fl all freighters are old. What are you talking about? Alright, we'll do a quick glance in this one, too. Okay. Let me grab you two. I'll show you over there. Alright. 
as you enter in this room, kind of peek your head around, you immediately hear a faint snoring. As you look in, this room is way different. A, it is trashed, and B, there's a man sleeping on a mattress over here. He's in a deep sleep. Huh. As of right now, it doesn't seem that he uh, noticed you guys opening the door. I'll put you guys right here. I'm just considering you in the hallway until you tell me else <laughs> otherwise. Looks like we've got the one. Let's close the door quietly and then we'll notify boss man. But, well, yeah, he'll probably want to come back and interrogate them himself. That'll work. We're going to quietly close the door. Give me a stealth check. That's all you. She did say that she's closing the door. <laughs> okay. For, um, who knows why, but the door stops creaking in that instant. <laughs> <laughs> All right, back to you guys. Okay. Oh, that's one. Do you want to go and tell him while I look at the rest of the rooms? Ah, uh, that'll be efficient. I'll go run out to him real quick. Okay. All right, just too quickly. This one as well is another one that appears to be just a, a room similar to your own. Okie dokie. Okay. I'm just gonna hurry on the wall. Right, just to just to save time, I will tell you which ones are just kind of looks like generic rooms over here. This one as well appears to be another kind of generic just kind of room that's nothing different than the rest that you've seen. Uh, same thing with this. However, when you get up to this door, it does look a little different. Let me... Immediately what you noticed is that the bed doesn't appear to be a moldy pile of nothing. You look in, you see a kind of a fairly nice bed, unlike the rest, really, in comparison, it's nice. Um, a wine rack, and then just a, it seems to be like a laptop and a few other things in the room that seems different. Noted. I'll bring that up too in a minute. Okay. Are you stepping into this room, or are you going to just let him know before you? Yeah, we'll just go back and let him know before I go in. Okay. Uh, I'll bring everyone back. All right, we'll go back outside then. All right, so as you guys were working on the vehicle itself, Dahi steps out. Hey, boss man, we've, uh, we found at least one person. They're uh, quite unconscious. Well, asleep, really. Do they look threatening? Uh, uh, not in particular, but... I mean, they at least are here if you want to try and get, get some answers out of them. Oh, I, I guess I should have uh, mentioned this to you two earlier, but uh, me and Amelia found cameras in our room and a microphone. Oh! This place is tapped? Yeah, that's kind of why we were trying to get out quick. That's why I didn't mention where we were going when we were leaving the room. Ah. Oh. And... Hmm. Why would Command send us here? The com 
Command didn't send us here, if I remember right. Uh, didn't yeah. you book oh. the hotel yourself? I booked this place. Oh, boss man. Ha ha ha. You sure <laughs> know how to pick them. Okay. Now hold on a second. <laughs> Don't blame this all on me. They There's only a few possibilities of them knowing that we were coming here. You're not suggesting a mole, are you? Uh, didn't say that. Just, you know, engaging your minds. Wow. Anyways, I'm gonna... I didn't think we were important enough to have a mole. Apparently. <laughs> yeah. Alright. Ace, stay out here. Guard the van. Just keep watch Alrighty. on the outside. I'm gonna come go in and question this guy. <clears throat> Come with me, Dahi. Right, ho, boss. Right before you step yeah, in, the door opens up. Duty. I'm moving up in the world, Mom. Boop. Millie, you kind of like step out as they're kind of moving towards back towards the door. Oh. It's not used to being. I found another room filled with some tech. We can stop by that one after the room with the person in it. I would rather get out of this place as soon as possible. You two can investigate mm -hmm. that room while I question the guy. Oh, boss man, since you're going in that room anyway, uh, there are some cards on the table. If you'd mind grabbing those for me, I'd be quite, quite happy. Uh, yeah, Ooh, sure. I would also like the cards. <laughs> also... I would just like to bring up that in that car down there, I found a key car for Barry Inc., which is the factory that was here five years ago. Hmm, must be an ex-employee or something. Possibly. It might be the one that's sleeping. Anyway, let's go investigate that tech room. Have fun interrogating the man who worked at the place that closed down five years ago, I guess. Alright, so who's going to the tech room, and who's going towards him? Or are you guys hitting the tech room before hitting his room? Me and uh, Amelia and Dahi are hitting up the tech room, and I believe Frazier's going to the subject's room. Yeah. Okay. Cool, we get old man alone interrogating again. What I always want. That went well the last time. Yes. Exactly, he's scary intimidate man. Okay. And that room's right next to the one we're going to, so we'll be able to hear everything, practically. Yay. Okay. With that being the case, we're gonna hit we're gonna handle Frasers first. Just in case you know, like, I don't know, he shoots the guy so you can hear the gunshots in your scene. <laughs> if we hear gunshots, we'll might come over to help. We'll assume it's the it the, the man is probably dead. All right. Okay. You step into his room. You see a. Uh... A guy laying on a mattress as you step in. He is more... The best way to describe what he's wearing is, like, kind of, um... Cargo pants. And then he has, like, a very... Just a plain t-shirt. But he's wearing a floral, like, kind of Hawaiian shirt. Where the only thing buttoned up is the bottom two buttons for some reason. It seems to be, like, slightly stained in areas. Step on in. He seems to be snoring at this point. Uh, Corey will like step halfway into the room and then knock on the uh, door. He's just there's a moment where he head pops up and then he just kind of like falls back over. Well, uh, Corey will <laughs> walk over his bed and just kind of kick the end of it. 
I don't want to get up. It's not work time yet. You're right. It's not work time. I'd like to ask some questions. Huh? Dad? You're not dad. That's that's not good. Um, he like spazzily gets to the corner. Are you? Hi. Hi. What's your name? Uh, Seymour. Seymour Butts. Nice to meet you. Puts his hand out. That's a joke, right? Are you, are you calling me a joke? That's not cool, man. Obviously, Why are you in my room? Are... Look, I'm with the military. I just, I need you to tell me what you're doing here. Sleeping. Okay. What else does it look like I'm doing? Did you, you did you get a room at this motel? No. Then I why mean, are you sleeping? It's my room. Do you not see the do not disturb sign? I'm I'm confused. Did you buy a room? Do you own the place? Why should I tell you anything? You look like a pig. <laughs> I don't talk to pigs. Corey uh, moves his hand and kind of hovers it over his pistol in the holster, kind of drawing attention to it. That's a mighty big gun. I'm going to need you to answer my questions. I'm trying to get out of here kind of quickly. Hold me an intimidation check. This has a plus four to it. That's an 18. Okay. Okay, okay. He, like, puts his hands up, and he's like, Okay. I didn't do it. Didn't do what? This is... This is about me, like... TPing that yard, right? What? No, I don't care about that. I just want to know how you got the room. It's, like, family-owned, so... Family-owned. Yeah, is that a, is that a problem? Does that mean that it, it's like passed down to your family as in you own it right now? Or do one of your family members own it? I mean, one of my family... I mean, it was kind of passed to my family, but it was like... That's like complicated. And kind of not your... Look, I, I need to know who... Place to know, you know. I need to know who owns the motel. Hmm. What if I, uh, oof. if I tell you, will you let me go? I, I'm not, I'm not holding you against your will. Oh, cool. He like slides up. If that's the case, he pats you. He like reaches to pat you on the shoulder. Yet. Slowly removes his hands. <laughs> You know, I thought we were starting to get along here, and at this point, I really, I really don't think that we're getting along. Okay, I thought we were coming to an understanding. All right, he's activating a power where he can basically distract you. Give me, give me a perception check, real quick. God. All right, this attack is at advantage, going straight to toughness. That 22. Ah, uh, straight to toughness? Yes. Okay, so you take one injury as you see him, like, talk to you, put his hand on your shoulder again, and just stab you in the side real quick. It's quick jab. He pushes off of you, leaving the knife in you, and he is just sprinting towards the door. Uh, am I able to get a shot off, or no? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm going. I'm going to shoot anyways, just to alert uh, Dahi and Amelia. Okay. A gun has been shot. Okay. And then I'll try to chase after him. After Obviously, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're gonna go 
back over here. All right, you're both in this room. Oh, computers. You got that? I can give it a go. Okay. So I just kind of check and see if the computer's locked or anything. It actually isn't. This in particular laptop is open to where it is showing feed of both the two cameras in your room. Ah. Oh. Well, figures out where we're getting observed from, at least. Just to clarify, this asset right here is a uh, cup of wine that seemed to be poured, and this is an ashtray. Kind of hard to tell with assets sometimes, so I figured I would put that out. Point that out. Only person we've really seen smoking and drinking here has been the proprietress. Odds uh, are this is probably where she was keeping watch on us. Can I look around the room just for anything else odd? Yeah, go ahead and give me an investigation or perception check. Uh, can I activate my ability to give her advantage on the investigation? Okay, go ahead. You know, the memory thing, Majig. Yes, that's when you're assisting. So, uh, if you're assisting her with this, she does have to make her check, which would just be fine anyways. Hold on. So let me let me pull this up. Because we're going to do this right this time. So because he is assisting, you, you got you to gotta roll for clumsiness. So roll me a straight d20 there, Amelia. Okay. All right. So basically what this means is it's not going to give everyone disadvantage. You do. Your this is going to be very weird because it's just the way this works. Your role will be at advantage. Dahi's assist role will be at disadvantage. OK, interesting, okay. because basically what ends up happening is why you are investigating this area. You're looking over the ride, etc. You trip hit out one of the legs on this and says wine bottles go everywhere and Dahi is like more or less distracted trying to catch those from shattering and making a lot of noise because who knows what if the guys <laughs> woke at the other the other room so go ahead and roll your investigation both of you or investigation twice go for. find yeah. a disadvantage and hers, hers and uh, yeah Well, I think I know what mine is. However, that's overall uh, a 20. You're just yeah. spilling wine everywhere. <laughs> it's, it's not helpful. It's never getting out of this carpet. It's it's fine. Millie, after you very much apologize for spilling that everywhere, <laughs> you, you, you proceed to look. And what you do find is this back here in the closet. It is a duffel bag, or kind of, etc. Not a duffel bag. That's a uh, suitcase. suitcase. Yeah. Um, as you look through it, the main compartments of this suitcase contain several things: duct tape, rope, zip ties, a small bag. A bottle of liquid that does not have a kind of a note or anything on it. It is probably about an inch or two tall. There's not a lot of it in it, but it seems to be unopened. Uh, and because you rolled so well, in the outer, the outer compartment contains a crumbled up note. Reading, very simply, I don't need this. They trust me. Let me handle this. And as you read that, you guys all hear a gunshot go off. Okay. 
Oh, that's not good. Tahi will run out of the room after grabbing a bottle of wine using the guy's room. <laughs> you don't even have to roll for that one. <laughs> exactly. I'm just taking it. Can okay. I bring the suitcase with me out into the hall? So you yeah. don't have to move the asset, but yeah. Okay. Just like dropping in the hallway when you run out? Yep. Okay. Let me... Let me set this up real quick. Let me hallway. Sorry, we've been at Evelyn's Grotto for so long. It was up in the air from my point of view how long you guys would spend here. You guys right. did spend... <laughs> According to my thing, you guys spent like 25 minutes trying to figure out how to fix a car. So, I'm not blaming me on that hey, one. Hey man, we're not mechanic. Should we break in the car or should we not? But the alarm, but like the battery in the car though. Right, let me... Look, man. All right, let me change this up real quick. All right. A gunshot goes off immediately on the hallway over this way. <laughs> he sprints out, almost tripping out of the door, stumbling to the ground, quickly getting up. <laughs> he looks down both hallways. He immediately starts sprinting down this way. As he turns around the whole oh, the corner itself, both of you over here pop out, seeing this the guy you saw before standing in the middle of the hallway. He kind of gives you a look of like a deer in the headlights of just pausing for a moment. Fraser, you walk out of the room, or sprint out of the room. He looks up at you, looks at you guys, and then he's going to begin to start sprinting behind him. Can I try and take a disarming shot? Yeah, go ahead. In the lakes. So this will basically be not initiative, we're just going to go you guys, then him. So, Amelia, you'll go first. Plus two. Alright, so that's a 17. Dodge, let me see. Oh, this dodge technically should be higher than that, my bad. You just barely miss him as he, like, stumbles to the floor and begins to <laughs> run off. Alright, you can popcorn it to anybody. Frazier or Dahi, or probably Ham if you want him to get a closer person, so probably Frazier. Alright, Frazier, go. Frazier will, uh... Oh god, I don't want to shoot him with the assault rifle. <laughs> yeah, he I was just think... shot by a sniper rifle. <laughs> That's a good point. That's a good point. <laughs> yeah, I think my pistol range is only 25, so... Throw it at him. I... You could take a step forward and fire, uh, that's... right? Yeah, it's true. Yeah, Corey will uh, step forward and take a shot. Yeah, go ahead and roll. Dodge that. I will. <laughs> yeah, it is like you guys you are shooting a weasel that it's just the way he's running, he's tripping constantly, getting up and running again. It's like you're you're shooting at a weasel. <laughs> it can either be his or Dahi's. I'm not sure what Dahi can do besides sprint after him. Yeah, I'll just go ahead and hand it to Dahi. Uh, he I was going to sprint after him and eat the bottle of wine at him. <laughs> All right, so... Please let that hit. I just want that to hit so bad. Okay, so that that would be your full movement there, right? I think. Hey, one I... more. One more. Okay. Yeah. So let me let me see this. 
You're throwing it at him. I will give you a strength check with your improvising roll tied to it as well. You also have that donut lock, so you could uh, activate that to uh, make that strength check a little better. Yes, I'll... Yeah, because I still have that penalty for my wound, so this will just be a zero on the strength. So I'm just rolling improvisation, effectively. You were, So, basically, that also tr gives you, because it's something with throwing or lifting, so you roll that strength check at his advantage. A disadvantage? Shit. At advantage, so sorry. This... That's... Strength check at advantage, because that's what the Mega Donut does. Oh, okay, so I get to roll yep. this twice and take the higher one. Cool. You technically could roll three and take whatever the highest. What, three? Okay. No, not imper. So, with expertise, because we, we've kind of forgot that, I'll take those 21s though. But, uh, with expertise, you roll with whatever the skill check is, and then you roll your extra thing. So, improvisation is your expertise. You still have to roll a strength roll. It's just you pick which is highest out of your improv. Improvisation roll versus your strength. So in reality, you would have rolled ah, strength twice yeah. because that strength rolls at advantage, and then you would roll it. Um, oh. Improvising, which would make anyways that twenty one would be it because that tw it would have been twelve strength or less than that. That would have been a seven, and then it would have been a uh, sixteen, and then the improvise would be that. So twenty one against this man. Yeah. I would say that's enough to yeet this across. Let me see if he can get out of the way. Nope. <laughs> Great bait. Yeah, I'm so glad that's the thing that hits. Right? Yeah, you throw a wine bottle at him, and it, like, hits him in the back of the head, and there's just a loud thunk <laughs> against his head as it hits the ground and rolls. <laughs> I... This poor guy. <laughs> I need to work Lots on my aim. Starts to pour for the back of his head as he goes, ah, and stumbles forward, rolls, and he will double move, and he'll be running out of this door. Any of you chase him? Uh, no, Cor but I'm picking up that wine bottle again. Corey is chasing him. Okay. All right, Corey, are you going through the door, or are you going to be creative with this? There is windows right next to you. Yeah. Some of them are shadow, shattered. Um, yeah, he'll he'll run through a window. Go out that way. Okay. Give me a just athletic check to see if you like cut yourself or anything in bad jazz. It is is a shattered window. All right, take a wound. Let me. Hey wild card, how's the uh, how's the car looking? Uh, you know, it's looking pretty good. Oh, okay, cool. Just wanted an update from wild card. It's all right. Hey Zach, how you doing? So he would have been roughly about here. So right about here. Yeah. As you crash through, you kind of cut the side of your arm for a moment as you walk in and then you like look up and you see him across the pool and he like looks over at you for a moment and he goes shit like one hand on the back of his head as he's continuing sprinting god there's no way I mean you're yeah you're at any the closest you can get to him with a full move is 40 feet away I guess I'll go ahead and move there. And then, whoops, it's 45 away still. What's the distance on my assault rifle? <laughs> Only 30? Yeah. Uh... Yeah, unless it's upgraded, it's 30. If you have anything to chuck at him, that you, you can chuck for a longer distance. But that's gonna be a strength roll for sure. Which I think you also have the donut thing. Uh, 
Actually, <laughs> can I? No, it's still too far away. I guess I'll just double move. Okay. So what I see happening is just an endless double moving. So what we're going to do is some athletic checks real quick, or acrobatics, right. and see if you're able to catch up to him, similar to how we did it with battery. Actually, 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 hold up. Yeah. I can I can double move and still uh, shoot oh, shit. with you my. Oh shit! You got the full perk. Yeah. Awesome. All right, so I will shoot with my assault rifle. Okay. That was a really crappy roll. Yeah. Shit. Uh, you shoot at him. The bullet hits, and he falls down onto the ground. I gotta make a check for him. You are shooting him with gunnery, by the, like guns, by the way. There's no, I have to make a check for him to see. Okay. As you rush over, you look at him, he is bleeding out onto the thing, but currently, as it looks like, he is still breathing. Nothing necessarily looks vital or important at this moment. He is bleeding and has a gunshot wound and a uh, probably a concussion from a wine bottle. Uh, I'll see if I can do like a, like a quick bandage to maybe stop the bleeding so it's not as terrible. If you use your med kit, obviously that, that will stop stop any risk of dying from the wound of course or you could just roll a, bit re a, a base treatment check uh i'm just gonna roll a base uh treatment check hmm okay. i should not be the one doing this you've been you've felt worse he's probably fine actually as you look at him, he is bleeding slightly, but you what looks to be why he's unconscious is more of him hitting his head against the concrete. So the the wound itself, just from what you know, and hell, you, you have an expertise about guns, guns, guns. You, you can clearly tell that he's probably going to survive the bullet wound. Obviously, he's gonna it needs to be treated at some point, but he's not in any sort right. of critical state. He is just unconscious at this point. Probably won't wake up for a while after hitting his head twice. Corey is going to drag him back to the hall. <laughs> uh, I feel bad for him, but he shouldn't have ran. He also yep. stabbed me! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if I was staying I mean, have you town, a dude showed up with a shotgun strapped to his back, I probably would stab him too. I said I was with the military. That doesn't mean shit. I could I know. say I, 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 I was joking. I was joking. Hey, Ian, I'm, I'm with the military, so uh, give me your credit card information. Oh, no. <laughs> we, we, have, we have dual Corey again. Oh, Corey, where's the other? Oh. There's also another D Adahi at the top of the hall. Okay, I'm nuking him. There, there we go. It's Fraser, the... you've, uh, you, you drag him back in. I imagine the other two of you are probably a little bit further up at this point, but yeah. Of course, he's being dragged. There's a moment of where, like, he's trying to open the door and keep it open by also <laughs> dragging, and it, like, slides, smacks him in the head again, and he's like, shit. <laughs> he like shove it and just kind of drag him in a little bit. It's a it's a rough rough time trying to get him through the door. Oh man, you lit him up, boss. You all right? It's yeah, it's just a flesh wound. Wait, him or me? What? Both. Well, he stabbed me. Uh, so that wasn't very nice. Uh, but yeah, him, he'll be fine. He only went unconscious I from, uh... I think it's uh... to determine if he's just bleeding out. Yeah. 
he'll be he'll be fine. He, there's no sort of like he's not in any immediate danger. Obviously, says so having a gunshot wound for a while will kill him, but he's not. You very much see that he was probably knocked unconscious by hitting his head against the concrete. There's a big bruise in the back of his head where you know where that's from, and then there's one like directly in the center of his forehead. I he doesn't wake up in an hour. You <laughs> he might never wake up, but you know he's at least immediately he is he is just unconscious. He probably will not wake up for a little bit though. So Are we gonna hard cut going to shoving him in the back of the van? Nine one one, or yeah, we're taking him with us, aren't we? Oh, bugger. Yep. He is getting tied up and getting thrown in the back of the van. Well, I guess that's convenient. I found a bag in that other room. You got zip ties, rope. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. And some undisclosed vial. Yeah, I wouldn't touch that. Didn't you say there was a small bag in there, too? Rag, not bag. Rag, sorry, okay. I heard wrong. Yeah, we can dab his blood, dude. Okay. I'm just gonna hard cut to you guys with the van now. Okay. Alright. Get me. You guys come on the outside here. With a... Hey, wildcard, you see him. You look at him all and right. you count all your friends. If there's one, two, three, four? Wait, that's not right. Who's the new guy? Five says you look dead. Because he stabbed me. He is me. alive. Oh, okay, that's good. Why, why, why do we even have him? What's, what's up? He, Is he uh, the one that's spying on us? He shrugs. Pretty much. I think his family owns the motel. He also, um, I tried questioning him about it and he kind of stabbed me and ran away, so. Oh, well, that's not good. Okay. You guys just make this a little bit more seamless. You zip tie him tie him up with quote whatever he's bound okay and then you just leave him in there <laughs> you just shut the door back all right is that plan good to go uh it'll last for a couple of trips the battery's not big enough but it'll make do for now uh we should get going whoever's the best at uh Medicking. That's not a word. Just hop in the back, see if you can stop his bleeding. I'd rather him not die. Sorry, boss. I'm not good with that. Yes, yeah, same. Ah, the inglorious <laughs> job falls to the Irishman. Go ahead and give me another treatment roll to see if you can. Step this guy off a little bit. Mm. Nope. Oh, oh God. no! I'm not one that's gonna say you accidentally kill a man in the back of this, but it's in a moving vehicle trying to treat treat a wound. It you you basically just kind of tie the rag you found earlier around his head and like, well, <laughs> good enough. Not even realizing there's a gunshot wound on his lower body. All right. So are you guys going to Jennifer's house still? That's yeah. So. Mm -hmm. He's got a man with us now. Okay. So let me switch over to that. Do I have that out? Let me. Okay. I'll switch you guys over to the waiting screen. Why? I figure out where I placed that map.
That was a uh, a journey. Yeah. An emotional journey. Yeah, it did very much happen. I have a I have a quite would you arrive at her place or are you leaving the unconscious body in your van? Or are you just gonna like walk in as a group <laughs> carrying this guy into her house? <laughs> I, um no Back of a van. <sighs> Mm -hmm. Imagine one of us would stay in there with him at least. Yeah, I'm I'm going to elect that Dahi does so and continues trying to treat him now that the vehicle has stopped. Are we just gonna him. like take him in the van with us to the school? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, come on, man. I feel like you're gonna chimera. It'll be like a secret. Program. This is this full program. on kidnapping now, so why not? <laughs> we have reason to suspect he is behind these attacks. Maybe. Maybe. Uh, well, he I'm might be related to, to someone it. that was supposed to be observing us, so... I think it's Mrs. Butts. Quote, we can use him as leverage. <laughs> wow, that sounded <laughs> really <laughs> evil. Yeah, it did. <laughs> Mrs. Nesbitt. I was laughing at Mrs. Butt and did not even hear the rest of it. <laughs> God, trying to put an alignment on this group, I think it's just chaotic evil. <laughs> I think it's chaotic neutral, personally. Yeah, that's probably more better. It's just like it's just spinning, sitting in the parking lot for 20 minutes arguing over how if we're going to break into a car or not. Uh, Alright. As Dahi treats his wound. Dahi, I, I would say you spend enough time. He, he basically, uh, it's just a let you know he basically rolled high enough to stabilize without any serious issues so you basically just make sure his wound is treat what you can do without like you know breaking up your medical kit obviously a gunshot wound will probably need to be treated in a couple days but for right now he's fine you can leave him the way he is um so at any point if you feel like you want Dahi to enter this building feel free to just uh drag him out Gotcha. So, uh, the three of you go up to the door, knock on it, and someone quickly hurries over and opens the door to see first the, the man that she saw before that's a, supposedly a detective wearing full squat gear now, um, with two other people. Um, uh, Mm, Jessica. Jennifer, I mean. Oh. I'm... Are... Okay, you c come on in. <laughs> mm. <laughs> yes, thank you. Thank uh, you. I'm... A little confused. Why? Why are you wearing that? Hmm. Protection. Yes, they're. How do I put this? We're fighting a dangerous enemy. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I. That's. I. D she so takes a moment, breathes. Would any of you like anything to drink? Yeah, just some water, please. Okay, okay. She just goes into <laughs> the kitchen real quick. Corey, makes you uh, a cup of water. Corey turns around to them too, and he's just like, I, I'm not the best when it comes to this uh, sort of thing. Like, interacting with people, mostly. I also don't know what we're allowed to disclose. Um, I mean, didn't we become public to mo like the people after the fall? Oh, hey, Dahi. Yes, but I may oh, or may not. Okay. Uh... He's not bleeding like a stock pig anymore. Oh, uh, Dahi. <laughs> I mean, ha, 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 hello there. Right, you, you can, you can. Kidding. So, like, what's the cover story, I guess? Like, what are we working with? Um, I may have 
last time I talked to her, told her I was a detective from out of town investigating the missing that persons you were cases. An officer? I, I, I mean, in our current circumstances, I think that would have made more sense. Well. So she slowly walks out holding a tray with a bunch of, like, a pitcher of water. Her hands visibly shaking as he, like, steps through through here she drops it and it just hits the ground and just shatters he's like oh I'm, I'm 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 sorry let me let me get something to clean that she quickly kind of rushes into the bathroom or not the bathroom the kitchen again to find a towel she seems shaken to say the least you should probably tell the truth she looks like she's seen a lot but that's just me i don't really know protocol that often this is my first mission let me let me handle a bit of a talk in here give me just a moment okay it's uh, perfectly all right miss cameraman is dead so put a pause on that for a moment as he's dealing with that with whatever he's doing yeah, he's, he's i'm good now i'm good now okay probably. go ahead oh, okay oh don't worry about it it's it's fine it happens all the time he like starts picking up the pieces with gloves of course that you know are the uniform so it's like he's starting to pile them together yeah, there's no it, need that to do happens. that uh they oh no i i insist uh besides it with what we're wearing i can understand if we come across as a bit uh intimidating and all uh i'm activating calming tone effectively to okay. get her to you know relax Go ahead and roll that. I believe that's uh Okay, it's persuasion check Persuade. versus her will. So Wow, okay. Thanks to Okay. That is unfortunate. <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm going to just use uh, two points of luck to turn that into a 19 so that it's a 26. Okay, that works with me. Just mark those down. Uh, by the way, time did pass. You guys spent roughly at least a time slot for you to roll 1d4. Go ahead and do that and add it to your list. I meant to mention that when we moved across. But Yay. yeah, beats her 16, so. She is, for the duration of the scene, under the status effect calm so her shaking kind of slows down as you kind of like use your past history your talents is just kind of calm her down from this kind of escalated uh state and i will mark this i'll put the snail oh, there we go we got that under a jiffy yes uh you see we're mostly here uh, investigating of course and well I'm your, if I remember correctly, my boss over there said your uh, brother was a, a police officer. And, well, you know how sometimes they get to the hairy situations. We do too sometimes. This is just kind of like our serious gear, I suppose. He, she nods for a, a moment. She's like, yeah. Uh, yes, um, he is a uh, police officer. That's that's why I called Fraser. Um she, like, hands you over a towel, like, clearly accepting your help. They'll clean up the water that was spilled yeah, before. The glass. Yeah. So. Ah, uh, yeah. You guys are public figures now, so every time someone sees you in your outfit, they roll to see if they recognize your gear. Because there is symbols on it. Let's see if she sees through your non-disguise at this point. This damn dice rolled underneath my my monitor there we go um are you i guess colleagues with fraser ah yes that would be the case mm -hmm. definitely indeed he's our ever proud and humble boss okay um okay so you both clean it up 
relatively. And, you know, Dahi, you, you take the towel filled with glass at this point, basically go in here and uh, throw it away, etc. It has one of those trash cans that kind of pop out from under the counter as she, she begins to kind of, like, sit down. Okay. I, um... Sorry, this is very, very overwhelming. I understand. You... What are you guys? Um... Obviously, I don't think you're a detective. That's... <laughs> right. Detectives yeah. don't wear SWAT gear. I'll, uh... I'll be honest with you. We're we're a part of we're part of Counterforce. Yep. Oh, I. Does that mean um, one of those gifted are here? You don't think it's my daughter or, or brother, do you? No, 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 no. no. We okay. we think that they're involved, though. More victims than anything else. Okay. Alright. I, I... I... He did call me moments ago. But he... She, like slows down her breath and just kind of like keep try keeps herself calm during this moment she's he called me and said that he was going to that he was at the high school said that he had a lead or something on finding pearl and then there was a large crash a, a gunshot and then the phone went out i've been calling him ever since but it's just go straight to voicemail right we, uh, we should be heading that way. Speaking of which, your communicator goes off. Hey, Pembroke. You've been rested for a little bit. Figured you would uh, give him a call now that you're in town lines. If Pembroke is here. I am here. I'm gonna, sh I'm gonna shove you out. This is just representation that he is here. You're currently sitting kind of what Pembroke says to give you a feel. You basically followed it, saw it, entered the high school, and you more or less kind of rested back for a, a bit just to make sure you weren't dying from its throwing you against a tree. And then you gave him a call. So you're kind of resting at a point where you can overlook the high school at this point, the soccer field in particular. Uh, team B... Uh, squad B, oh. sorry. Yeah, this is Fraser speaking. I'm Agent Pembroke. I've just entered into the the town overlooking the high school. What's your current position? We're uh, at a base of sorts right now. He like raises an eyebrow at that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, well, I'm gonna go next right. some more. She like looks at you, Dahi, for like, "Hey, come, come with me to help actually make this time." Oh, yes, of course. Well, your uh, big friend has made his way to the high school. Oh, that's mm, just perfect. Mm-hmm. All right, look. I suggest getting over here. Yeah, that was my next plan of action, regardless. There is a civilian there. He's a police officer. Well, that complicates things. Yeah, very much so. I'll see what I can do. 
Uh, if I can make the suggestion, I would wait for us. That thing seems to be very, uh, powerful. I know, I had to run in with it. Hmm. But I can hold my own. Just get here as soon as you can. Right. We're on our way. So what's the plan, boss? We're going to the high school. As soon as possible, he kind of turns back towards Dahi. Are we heading out already, boss? Yeah. We are going to the high school. Yeah, Dahi, you, like, come out with ah. a tray of, like, glasses of water and, like, another pitcher that she had. Oh, um... I... I, I, I don't know what to say, so make sure he's okay. I'll bring him back safely. Go. Yeah, no worries there, ma'am. We're very well trained, so your yep. your uh, brother's in great hands. We'll get him back safely, A-OK. Okay. okay, well, thank you. She kind of looks up to you, Fraser, and there is a clear look of desperation in her eyes. Obviously, anybody, like, you imagine that she probably would have reacted different, but she does look like she's against the wall. Both her brother and her daughter are missing. She just a look of not knowing what to do. <laughs> she kind of just kind of looks down and kind of gazes down at the table. Let's go. All right. You all, all head right, out. Boss. Are you taking the guy is the question. I guess. I don't think, yeah, I don't think we can just toss him out on the street at this point. I, I don't want to leave him here. Oh, Jennifer, could you do us a solid? <laughs> yeah, this guy that's zip tied in the back, can you just like lay him in your closet or something <laughs> until we get back? It's it's fine. <laughs> we'll clean the blood stains when we get back. All right. Yeah. So. No, he's staying in the van. I am calling a break here because I need to pee, and this is also a good point to stop because we're hopping into our first dungeon of this campaign. Optional, but you know what? Yeah. Here we are, baby. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna put the yeah. on screen. Okay, <laughs> are we good? Yep. All right. So you prop down on the soccer field in particular. You kind of come through a clearing up, up kind of the north side over here, and just kind of pop onto this massive soccer field in front of you. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I'll start moving up towards the soccer field. Uh, can he actively, like, see anything in the general sort of area? Across the soccer like in... field itself? Yeah. Oh, yeah, go ahead and give me, like, a perception check would probably be it, yeah. Also, so that's for your... Uh... Wow. Feel free to drag out your drone, I forgot to. Yeah. Because you can roll with your yeah. drone as well. My drone's a better, has better eyes than I do. So, over the soccer field, besides the seeing where sections of the, the paint have just kind of faded away over the year of this being closed, I mean, the grass is very tall. Like, there's, you don't see anything necessarily moving. It's not, like, tall enough for a, something to, like, crawl into you and sneak up on you. It just seems empty in front of you. You just see the high school in front of you. All right. 
No, oh, this is eerily quiet. Yeah, of course you'd send his drone out a little bit further ahead. Okay. As he will slowly make his way across the field. That's... sorry. <laughs> <laughs> what did I trigger? <laughs> a time bomb. No, I pl accidentally hit a song that was basically like, BATTLE! NOW! <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, that's the reason why I was like, what is it? walk across the field, you're ambushed by flamingos! Oh no. Alright, so you, you proceed to move down across the field, and when you're about halfway, give me give me another perception check real quick. You can roll both. Both Raven and yourself. Okay. Neither of our eyes are very good this time around. Okay. No? Nothing seems off. Keep moving further and further across the soccer field. Making your way over to the bleachers in this area. Give me one more. There we go, Pembroke. Okay. A few different things. First, because you're lower to the ground, you'll notice this first. Let me... So, first, just to explain the map, because it's a little cut off here, but the, this little pathway in front of you, this, uh, it, it basically kind of crests and hugs this kind of fence and a few, like, overgrown bushes that kind of just kind of, uh, well, separates both the, the school and the soccer field itself. So, if you basically go down kind of this area in between, there's kind of an opening within the gate where you can walk into the actual campus, and there is one over to the left side as well. Uh, that is just kind of attached to it. Um, but second, what you actually found with those perception checks is firstly... In front of you... You see... A splattering of blood on the tiles in front of you. And secondly, your drone itself, you know, your VI kicks on. And from the camera itself, it's up in the air, obviously, and it's just kind of scoping the area out for you. You immediately, it's hard to tell, but there's it's some clear kind of movement in the trees to the north of you. Not big, not like this thing barreling through the forest that you witnessed before, but there's clearly movement in the trees itself. Mm. It's hard at this distance and like being as high up as a bird, it's hard to actually make through the actual forest to see what it is, but there's a starting to be a little bit of movement throughout the forest itself. Yeah, as Pembroke, you know, is looking at his the little computer on his gauntlet, he look towards the blood and then he just looks up at Raven and goes keep an eye on that situation as he will move up to investigate the blood splatter okay alright I guess make me an investigation roll so you can discern from this little spot right here it yeah, so just by the coloration of the blood itself, you can kind of, you can kind of tell that it's fresh, like it hasn't fully darkened yet. Or, oh, I think I had that right. Yeah. That's not a good sign. All right. 
he will uh, proceed down the the path towards the fence. Okay. Are you leaving your drone to kind of watch out this area, leaving it behind you? Uh, I mean, I he, I probably still have it, like still following me, just at a distance. Okay. Just kind of like, rather than like twenty feet above you, is it going to be like bird's eye up in the air kind of view? Yeah. Like it has been. Okay, I'll keep that in mind. I'm not going to place down its icon then. I'm just going to keep in mind that it, it is above, and I will let you know if it sees anything. All right. Uh, let me. As you move ahead. Yeah, you, you kind of step through the uh, the kind of broken down fences at this point. Immediately you see that the grounds are kind of overgrown. The bushes that used to be probably cut back are now just kind of growing through the fences and just kind of going everywhere, taking over this abandoned place. In front of you, you can see where the wall has basically caved in. And this is the kind of the point that you saw this kind of creature entered the building from before. Mm. It just barreled its way through. So it was completely caved in then? Yes. You could attempt to try to get through, but there is like a chance of it potentially like collapsing, etc. It You can kind of see in, but it's still kind of it's heavily caved in. The chances are yeah. very <laughs> slim. Yeah, he'll probably end up making his way to the other doorway then. Okay. On the right side. Again, he's uh, just trying to keep his eye out for any movement Oddities. or anything like that. Yeah. All right, you get up to this door. It is uh, chained and padlocked. <laughs> well, he's definitely not going to pick it. <laughs> hammer time. Yeah, he will grab out his element hammer and extend it. Yeah, this well. small little box of a device, the handle spreads out and you just grab it in your hands ready to slam it into the uh the padlock in front of you go ahead straight hammer roll well, guess there's only one way to make an entrance now you, you take one big slam into it and the the chains you you kind of didn't really hit it full force on the right thing. Most of your hammer actually kind of hits the door more than it does the chain and doesn't really break it. All it does is make a hell of a lot of noise as it kind of echoes throughout this kind of empty campus. Okay. And with that, there's a few other people arriving. We're going to cut to them. Boop. Welcome to St. Asaph's High School. Y'all kind of get out of the van after you park. Is it uh, uh, safe to leave that guy in the van? What he deserves after shanking me. He'll be fine. Alright. I'd be more concerned about where we're going. Uh, into a beast's nest, it appears. Yep. I guess we need to see if we can go in, huh? You see uh, Corey kind of readying all his guns, checking to make sure everything's good. 
I'll go ahead and contact them, or let them know we're on site. As you kind of like reach up to like about to hit your communicator, you hear a large slam to the north, and it just kind of echoes over this campus. Or I'll just go say hello to him myself. Yeah, let's head that direction. Yep. Yep. Okay, I'll proceed in going that way. Yeah. Hey, Pembroke, your VI goes off as there's four un unknown uh, figures moving up towards you. I'm guessing I don't have a very clear picture of this, do I? Not from your VI, but if you just look in that general <laughs> direction, the map connects right here. <laughs> no. <laughs> you, like, look at your VI, look up, and there's just basically there. <laughs> If you ever, you can re-situate yourself if you don't. Uh, obviously, Amelia would not be in the front. <laughs> Good to see you in the flesh, Andrew Pembroke. Mm. He just kind of like looked you up and down. So you are all our squad B, huh? Yeah, that'd be yep. us. Hi. How you doing? He just kind of like gives a glance to a wild card. He smiles. Man. Let's get this over with. Agreed. He's gonna go in for another swing at the door with this giant hammer. Go ahead. You break the chain. And as you do so, another loud echo echoes throughout this this facility. I think it might have heard that. Yeah, it probably, probably did. Heard, it probably heard the first one too. Yeah, it's got like let's see. Six ears. Snakes have ears. I don't know. Oh, God. Pembroke will continue to walk into the school. <laughs> Corey uh, readies his assault rifle and pushes in. As you guys are walking in, you hear a loud screech immediately. Uh-oh. That doesn't sound good. It is coming and getting louder towards you. Are you guys still going in is the question. Should we move out of the way? Maybe we should let it run out, and then we can surprise attack it. Then Brooks already walked into the school. <laughs> the quarry's right behind him. Let's go back and mop. Goodness. Oh my god. Okay, let's do this. <laughs> oh no. So oh, much oh. for stealth. Me, for three sessions, going, Hey, play this is not a creature. You should just run straight out. Everyone runs directly into it. I did not. <laughs> to be fair, I did not want to. Neither did I. I am jamming this bottle of wine into one of its orifices. So <laughs> help me God. <laughs> Don't Dear worry, Lord. guys. I have a last ditch plan. This is a KDM. I also, I also love how it's like, all right, we're just going in there, we're getting the guy. Let's make as much noise as possible and sprint in <laughs> towards the screeches. Hey, you knew this was going to happen with Pembroke. I thought Pembroke would have a brain after getting almost annihilated in one attack. <laughs> this you know. giant, or this big guy who is very bulky is not very good at being silent. All right, let me let me fix because it pasted you guys weird. Wildcard grabs out his combat knife.
All right. So just to let you guys know, I am attempting the entirety of IP has been me experimenting and getting out of my comfort zone in terms of stuff, just in campaign in general. This being, this has dynamic lighting on it because you're going into a high school where all the windows are boarded up and it is shut down. So if there's any issues when you enter in or you think you're seeing something that you should not be seeing, this would be the time, like, interrupt me by all means. If this ultimately doesn't work because Roll20 is currently, like, updating some strange stuff with, um, with dynamic lighting, I... I will call break. I will basically fix it and then do it a different way like I normally do it. So, All right. So I'm going to hop over here. This is where you guys can you see yourselves? Yes. 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 Cameraman, can you see them as if they are like basically? I'm going to move wild card a little bit down. Oops. Is it brightening up f more for you? No, I'm only seeing uh, Corey's. Um, Point of view? Yeah. Okay. I will fix that real quick. Uh... That's it. Wild card. Dahi. Take the lead. Obviously, you can rearrange yourself. <laughs> One thing about this as well is there is doors, but you're going to have to let me know when you're going through doors because it physically will not let you move through a door without me doing it because I. it was very hard to set this up. <laughs> Okay, good job, me trying to give Agent Fraser access to his character sheet. <laughs> okay. Um, look. Oop. You can have access to the token, which would actually allow you to get, see their site. Instead, you can have access to their character sheet. It's easier this way than trying to detach the token and give him access. Yeah. <laughs> uh. I do die. I did. Milo is who I did not do. All right. Ian, you should have the ability to control all of them. Yes. If I move wildcard up here, does it reveal yep. more? Okay. So in reality, you three would be further back. These chuckle fucks there are moving in. Chuckle fucks. All right. Take it away. All right. Well, Pembroke is, is that a door to the north? Yes. He would immediately go to check the door if I can carry my, where's the door? There. <laughs> yeah, just where that handle is to zoom in. Okay, you creak open the door. You guys just see him kind of step into the first room he gets to. All right, Pimbrook, what are you doing? He's going to, you know, kind of gauge the situation and whatnot as he's moving up through here. You know, not expecting too much in the bathroom, but yet the creatures he's encountered, he wouldn't be surprised if something's hiding in here. All right. You're basically poking your head into each of the, uh... Yeah. Also, because of the fact that there is a potential civilian, he's checking hiding areas. Okay. So you walk into this little, small little stall. You... No one in there. No one in this one. And in addition, there is no one in this one. This so seems to be an empty bathroom. All right. Frazier, are you trying that door? Yeah. That door, in particular, is locked. There's no key card. It's an actual locked door. Okay. Corey's gonna look at the three three people behind him and point to the door that uh, Pembroke walked into. Kind of motioning them to go into the bathroom. Dahi nods and kind of, and we all shuffle in, I'm assuming. <laughs> uh, quick question. Does it still sound like that thing's getting closer? 
Roll me a perception check. You don't hear anything as, at the moment. Let me in. Let me well, in. Every, like, what you can tell with that is, like, each step you take very much echoes in this hall. Like, if you guys aren't actively trying to keep your steps quiet, it very much echoes throughout. And definitely if Pembrokes is going full ham into every area he's going into currently, it's just echoing throughout this building. All of you guys literally Let just me follow in. me into the restroom. <laughs> we were ordered to. Look. <gasps> cool. There's nothing here. I'm I'm glad we got in before that thing reached the main door, but it's heading this direction right now and we should not face it head on. Ow. That means Not I'm not. Much I can agree yeah. upon. I'm just trying to find a good place to set up my turret. Let me listen for a second. Corey's gonna sit by this door, like ear up against it, just trying to see if he can hear the thing walking down the halls. Okay, give me a percent check. Hmm. No, you you really don't hear anything. Just kind of the eerie, eerie silence of this building. Can I do a perception check? <laughs> Go ahead. I didn't do any better. Wow. We all that suck. That was one. Okay. That was not one. That's, you don't hear anything. It's kind of like, you know, like sometimes like you have that ringing in your ear, like in the silence. <laughs> <laughs> you just hear the ringing in your ear. No, I'll yeah. go for one. Why not? He'll probably roll high. It's just everybody what? keeps rolling. And oh my gosh! <laughs> wow. <laughs> we hear Smiley nothing. Walk, walk up to the door. Let's, let's see if I can keep this train rolling. Die. 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 Oh yeah. my gosh! <laughs> my, my little bring home. Party no. You don't hear anything in particular. Goodness. This bodes well for if we end up having to fight that thing. Okay. Yeah, pretty much. Well, it does appear as if it is somewhat masking its footsteps, at least to an extent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're probably right. I don't doubt that that thing can at least be somewhat quiet. All right, we're gonna keep moving, but as soon oh, as yeah. we hear that thing walking down the hall, we need to get into a close room. I don't want to take that thing head on in this close quarters of a hallway. Right. He, like, Milo kind of looks around the restroom and you think that a place like this would be better? No, but if there's a chance we can let it pass by, then we need to take that chance. Our goal here is to get the civilian out, not fight that thing. Hmm. I've been tasked with dealing with the creature. That's not my mission. No, well, it's mine. Milo will open up the door. Oh, you two are going to get along just fine. Yeah. yeah. Oh my. Milo, you are aware that you're like your your main mission objective is to support them, right? <laughs> Just throw that clarification out. But that is also a part of your mission, of course. Yeah, because I know the first thing he said whenever I was brought in was, "We got a thing for you to deal with," and he brought up the twelve. That was in the cutscene. It was clarified in your little cert mini thing where it, you are mainly tasked there because you had the highest likelihood to get there and you have the highest likelihood of an R&D to actively aid them in what they're doing. But that was tagged on too. 
Yeah. All right. Oh yeah, uh, Milo's footsteps definitely ring out every single step he makes. Uh, Corey's gonna tap him on the shoulder and point to his feet. And he's going to point to the turret that, like, he basically has this somewhat of a, like, metal sort of, like, looking backpack thing, but it does have, like, a turret sticking out. He points to that and just, and towards his armor and just shakes his head. <laughs> Uh, right. Can I try and pick the lock to the door that was locked? I don't know if I actually need a kit or something for that. Um, you can you can attempt to, yeah. I mean, obviously, it would be easier if you had a kit, but like you can always attempt to. You can always try with a leaf. I I would sh shut up, Thresh. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I would shut up, Thresh. <laughs> Slide of hand? Yeah, go ahead. Nope. I was hoping I'd get a nice roll, but nope. No, like, you spend a little bit to do that, but you kind of see the rest of the group kind of moving ahead, so you kind of, I imagine, kind of... Give up on it. Give up on it and continue forward. Let's see here. As I approach this door here, I'm once again going to try to hear to, you know hear where it's at uh, or just try to get some sort of a general location just getting closer or further away okay go ahead and give me another one I'm gonna I'm gonna call it here it's not gonna be the case that everyone every time one person calls for a perception yeah. check everybody rolls or we'll be yeah. here all night so yeah you can call it when you're kind of like nervous or want to get a sense of it but like you could also assist yeah. each other but just just so I yeah. put that out there so we don't have a bathroom scenario now we'll go down to the bottom, as the others are up top. Or he is checking his door, by the way. Okay, I'll pop you in here. Zolhandro up here. Is anyone going in with him? Uh, yeah, I can. Okay. Um, Corey is going to motion for Amelia to check this room, since, you know, he's kind of the point man here. Doesn't want to be not out in the hall. Okay. As you two... So, Amelia, you, you, you kind of go in here and, you know, you, stack, you check each of the stalls and there doesn't see, appear to be anyone in them. Nothing to note. Nothing in here. Good. All right. Miley coming down. Yeah. You two staying in the hall or following in with him, just so I know who's in this room. Uh, I will uh, follow he's keeping in. an eye out in the hall. Okay. You both enter into a uh, classroom. You see a bunch of kind of uh, desks stacked up and get kind of against the wall and a big chalkboard in front of you. Yeah, Miley's just going to... Come over and investigate the, the desks. Okay, what do you say, uh, Thresh? Well, that's it's a big chalkboard. It is a big chalkboard. So, oh. as you go over there, by the way, like, you, you look at it, etc. It's just, there's nothing necessarily important, per se. It legitimately just looks like there's a bunch of desks stacked up in the corner that hasn't been, you know, touched in over a year. They probably moved it out so they could move whatever out of the room, etc. If you want to search through the desk, you can, but obviously you have to climb, move them. There's a lot of noise that would have to be acted there if you wanted to dig through these desks. He will avoid that for the time being. What is this green thing? It's like a little mat that's on mm -hmm. the front of it. It's like where you would place, right. it kind of has an angle where you would place like a laptop down on it just to keep it a little higher than the rest of the things on the... All right. Do you want to take the map, wildcard? The mat? Yes. You can write one green mat in your inventory. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> 
Why are you taking that? You never know. It's In my map. experience, you never know what you're going to need on a mission. He's starting to have flashbacks to the four squad members he had coming into this place. Hey, Wildcard, you look over to uh, Pembroke, and the, his his entire front area of his, uh, his uniform is kind of stained red. You, uh, you good? I'm fine. You sure? Yes. All right. Don't take a word for it, boss. <laughs> All right, Dahi, give me a perception check why these two, these groups are uh, searching through. I suppose I'm just keeping lookout, so let's do that perception. Okay. Oh, that's much better. Yes. So, as you kind of sit here at this kind of intersection of hallways, you, you kind of look down the long hallway that spreads, spreads out throughout the entirety of this building. And within the darkness, you kind of see something shifting. It's slowly getting closer and closer. And then you hear it. It's shattering. A large bang against the lockers down the hall. And again. And at that, uh, he immediately dashes to the northern room. Everyone hears the screech as, Dahi, you very much clearly saw something shifting, something large. And it just picked up pace immediately. It probably saw you. <laughs> you hop in the bathroom. I think it's coming, boss. Might want to stand back from the door. The noise picks up closer and closer. Whatever it is, it sounds almost right outside the door and it stops. Everyone need to make stealth rolls immediately. Mm. <laughs> oh. There's a disadvantage due to oh. your uh, your thing. I'm a disadvantage due to the fly I have on me. Ah. Uh -huh. uh -huh. right. <laughs> well, here's the uh -huh. It doesn't hear wild card or Amelia at all. Like my God. Oh wow, that's okay. better than I thought I'd get. Stealth. It's supposed to describe how I do this. It's. It's a, it's like obviously one person rolling low is not going to fail the entire group. It's taken by successes versus failure, and that note twenty has saved your successes as you yes! you just kind of hear it pick up again as it proceeds to kind of walk to the right that way for you guys. We need to move now while it's behind us. Won't it see us? Not if we're very, oh, very lovely. careful. It's got eyes in the bat on its tail. Uh, well, we can't stay here. Go on, wild card. <laughs> Kick up out the door. I'm stuck. <laughs> okay, is uh, anyone like peeking out? Who, who's yeah. going out first? I, I definitely I need to know for this. Corey is peeking out before okay. I'm going out. walking out the hall. All right. So both of you, I'm going to put you here. Okay. 
currently, as your your view in particular, you don't necessarily see anything. But roll me roll me some perception checks to see what you can hear at least. Yeah, uh, Fraser, you don't really see much of anything. You kind of look in the direction of where the noise goes, but, um, yeah, uh, wild card. You see a big shifting shadow. You can kind of almost make out the shapes now as this, uh, this beast is more or less kind of sniffing around kind of on its low to the grounds is kind of in this area. You do know that it probably would not fit through that door unless it crashes into it, so... At the very least, it will most likely come back this way. As of right now, it is currently occupied in that corner, but who knows how long that will be. Uh, Wild card gives the signal that they need to move now. <laughs> Go ahead and pop everybody out of the door. Corey is keeping his eyes behind them. Card begins moving forward. Oh, by the way, I did not point this out because I, I forgot about it, but um, your sight distance on this is determined by your, like, awareness rank, so Amelia has, like, eyes compared to you guys. She has, like, ten additional feet of her view. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I can metagame. You can metagame. I hope you don't. <laughs> I will. I will. I mean, it's going to be kind of hard to tell which one's mine and what's Amelia's. But... Okay, you all need to immediately make stealths again. As you are basically moving very near this creature, so. Oh my god, I suck. <laughs> Me and Bebrook. I got a zero. <laughs> oh, no. They're actually picking it up this time. Okay, so that's. Zero. Sued by a nat 20 again. You guys. <laughs> Continue to move. Which we way are you two going? people good at stealth. Which direction are we going? I have minus six to my stealth. Um, you also have the disadvantage as long as you're Corey, Corey's gonna point uh, to the north. Ah, oh, wow, what a terrible choice on my part. Yeah, you, you begin to uh, see the... Uh, the wh where where you assume how it entered in. It's just this crumbled wall and shattered door. It kind of very, very harder to kind of... Um, there's not a lot of light coming in. It's very much caved in, but there's a little bit where you could potentially, like, crawl through if you wanted to, but... As of right now, I need to roll something. <laughs> I don't like that. Okay. Uh, can I roll perception? I'm worried about it starting to move again. Yeah, sure. Go ahead and do that. Also, let me double check something. Something seems off. Wow, I have been rolling terribly tonight. Actually, hold on. Did that not save correctly? Let me compare. Oh. Here you go, Amelia. Have five more feet of vision. I was like, you were slightly, okay. you were like basically, you were a little bit more than them. I was like, that's odd. Okay. All right. Oh my gosh, I can see for days. <laughs> Bye. Uh, you, know, like, you used to see something moving in the darkness. Hey guys, roll me some stealth checks. I can just barely see it. I'd like to activate fly on the wall. Go for it. 
a nice two, guys. Well, it's not a nat 20, but it's still a 20. Mm. So mine's the 14. <laughs> okay. Flying the wall gives you advantage, right? Yep. Okay. As long as I don't move. Let me... Okay. So let me double check. Pimbrook, you're that two, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Just making sure I know your failure. <laughs> I don't know why I asked. Both are not great. Okay, so that. All right, it begins to turn in your direction. If you guys have anything that you can pop to change some of those rolls, this would be the moment to do so. Um, As of right now, you guys have. Uh... Oh wait, I don't have to change. Mine. I think it's. I think it's still the same day from when I did my broken determination last time. Uh, you used... When did you use that? I used it against... Um, I used it against a battery in the alleyway, I think. You did. So you do not have access to that. Yeah. Uh... I have nothing to actively do anything. I have nothing. I have an idea. <laughs> Okay. So... No one's popping anything. It is starting the turn in your direction. If you wanted to attempt to one of you to attempt to do something to distract it for a moment, you can. I was gonna ask if I can yeet a throwing star down one of the hallways to make a noise. Oh, go for it. It would have to be like the southern hallway. Yeah, whatever, whatever to make it think it's something else is going on in a different direction. So just give me a ninja star roll. Okay, okay. What a way to go, Ian. <laughs> in in your defense, your character had no idea that was blocked off. Yeah. So yeah, it starts the turn, and Amelia quickly, just flick of a hand, and Ninja Star flies past it, and just clatters down the hallway. And it proceeds to pop its head towards the loud noise and begins to slowly make its way down south. Corey is rapidly motioning for them to get down the, the west hall. Okay. Everybody's moving down the west hall. Alright. All right, is any of you entering these rooms, or are you just moving down the hall? Yeah, let's uh, check I'm entering this, room. this one. Okay. Boop. Yeah, Pembroke would probably enter this one as well. Or I can just chill out in the hallway. I moved yeah. you down into it. <laughs> if you if you didn't move in, that's on your end. Fraser, are you watching that hall? Yeah. Give me a perception nah. check immediately. <laughs> I said Corey was chilling out in the hall, but... Oh, I thought you said pit. Sorry, I got... No. Okay. Okay. I want to go in this room. I'm going to tell you, you're seeing a shift in shadow just about right here. It is... Whatever it is, it's close. It didn't go all the way down. Right now you're safe, but it's there. <laughs> okay, oh, I'll move you in here. So yeah, wild card up here, you see a bunch of stacked... Uh, Again, a bunch of stacked uh, desk, etc. All these windows aligning the wall are boarded up. There's almost little to no sunlight um, coming into this place. Are you collecting green mats now? Yes. You never okay. know. You never know? What's in these boxes? Boxes? Oh, are these just desks? Yeah. Okay. Never mind. 
guess the door's connected. You need a double check. Okay. Go ahead, Pimbert. Yeah. Yeah, you kind of like look around the room. There's again a lot of unused stack desks. Seems as to be another empty classroom. So just from a cursory glance, there doesn't appear to be anything on the like a teacher's desk or around it. No. Like so, said so first glance, there's nothing on it. There's nothing around it. It just seems like you know it's been left here. Dust, very much covers it. He would head back out. Yep. Alright. So as you guys move into the hallway? Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Who's in the hallway currently? None of you guys made too big of noise. Both Dahi and... Uh, uh, sorry. Blanking. Old man. Fraser. Uh, <laughs> wow. Wow. Roll me some stealth checks. I'm not the greatest person to want stealth. Okay. <laughs> Can't be as bad as me. Lucky bastard success. <laughs> you are you welcome. It crit against you guys, and those crits oh. canceled each other out. <laughs> you see Ooh. the shadow begin to move down south a little bit more slowly and very carefully moving down. This would be the time to move. Here, let me get you guys out of those rooms. Read them. Okay, guys, we're up. <laughs> Let's keep moving. Right. Yeah. Does anyone have, like, good ghost stories to tell while we're running from this creature? God? <laughs> I hear a no, bit of his voice that appears in my head sometimes. Shut up, wild just... card! <laughs> <laughs> okay. You just... No hear clinking right now. coming from behind. <laughs> right. Oh, end of map. Okay. I hope you guys are enjoying horror. I'm enjoying it. Yes. Anywho, you guys are over here, making your way further down the hallway. Mm. As of right now, you uh, don't really hear anything behind you. I'm guessing I don't need perception to see that. Nope. If it's on the map, you see it. <laughs> yeah, Amelia, as you approach, you see just a red splatter across, firstly, across and in this, uh, blocker and then there's this almost a trail can i tell what direction it's going in further down the hallway that's not good oh, i sure hope he's in one piece well this bed's well no is this door unlocked Yes. Pop you in. Seems to be another classroom. This one in particular says uh most of the door most of the doors don't really have signs. It just has like labels for this is room one A, etc. But this one in particular is more or less points out that this is where the science room is, more or less, that it is connected to a lab. Yeah, Fraser, you, you kind of see more stacked in. 
just so you're aware, exploring. Like, there's a there's another door down here yeah. in the corner. Uh, okay. anything of importance in the desk? You're going through it? Yeah. Firstly, if you're being quiet about it, make me a stealth check. Oh, fun. Wow. Nice. Okay. Good. You get to live another day. Maybe. Let me roll for this. Actually, roll me sister straight d20. I am not okay with this. Yeah, it's mainly what you find in there is just loose papers, uh, pencils, etc. It's just, you know, simple schoolware, probably some sort of like lesson plan. Biology 101. Ooh, wow. I will check the lab now. Okay. I'm going to go to the other two. So. Yeah, that's fine. Right. Pembroke, where are you going? Are you waiting for them to go in? Uh, he was actively going over here and just looking at that blood to, you know, see if he can tell if it's fresh or not. Okay. Um, I would say probably medicine to see how, or not medicine, but treatment. Wow. Now, this could have been here for weeks at this point. You're not quite sure. You've done good there. I hear you also going in the room. Yeah, he'll yep. follow. Okay. So, do you two have a Sorry. moment to move around? Yeah, you guys can move in after. Oh. Well, that's oh, not that foreboding. That's a lovely message. So, Amelia, are you going in as well? Yeah. I'll stay out in the hall to keep an eye. I'll just be in, like, the little corner next to the locker. Like, I'll put you here. Yeah. Okay, Pembroke, you're gonna... Whoop. Just casually walks on in. <laughs> Is that a gun? Yep. I think that's a gun. Ooh, and another green mat. <laughs> Adding it to your collection of green maps. This one has a little blood stain on it. That means it's valuable. <laughs> it's unlike the yeah. rest. So yeah, you, there's clearly a trail of blood. Not a lot, like a splattering happening, but there's drips all the way up. But it does look, just in this chair, that there's a lot more than anywhere else. Strange. Uh, he'll take a crack at seeing how old it is, I guess. Yeah, treatment for the, uh, the blood in the chair, etc. It's, you can't really determine, how, like, within the hour or anything, but it's very much been the last few days that since this, because there's, it's not, like, completely dried or just stained on the ch chair. It's, it's still a little bit liquid. Damp. We might be able to get a you DNA guys. sample from the mat with the blood on it. It'll be a good idea to take it in just in case. You're just collecting those things, aren't you? Well, yeah, but this one actually, you know, could help solve something. <laughs> could bring closure uh, to someone. Know. I'll take the gun. Hey, you can have the gun. I'm not allowed to have more than one gun at a time. And I'm not allowed to have anything but more than a pistol. So, Dahi, you, you, you grab the gun. Uh, you kind of look it over. It is... A regular issued pistol and it is out of ammunition out of ammo it also has a little bit of that blood on it probably a good idea to take it just in case yeah so Milo will walk up and he'll actively pull out of his pack a just hatchet and lays it in like you know basically next to that um, pistol there and just looks over at them and goes somebody else can use that I've got my hammer. You see the hatchet, right? Yeah. Okay. 
So yeah, he lays down this kind of like shiny uh, hatchet in front of you. It almost kind of gleams what little light there is in the room. Um, uh, let me roll something. He kind of looks at Wildcard and goes, I think you would probably need it the most. Hey, Dahi, you feel uh, drawn to this hatchet immediately. Oh, I don't know. That looks real pretty. Can I have it? I don't care who takes it. I just thought I'd offer it. Yoink! So as you take <laughs> it, you immediately feel... The best way to describe it, this kind of feeling that surrounds your life, this kind of ultimate dictation over just fate itself that essence that you feel the the power of your life itself you feel within this hatchet and i will reveal it to you um i need to switch it out of somebody's uh equipment acts of the irish that's it You obtain Spitz Lucky Hatchet. Spitz Lucky Hatchet continuously contains one additional luck po point into it. It recharges after each long rest. So, um, and with you, I forgot about this, because your own ability and power is flowing through it, it's actually short rest that it, re that it recharges on. Oh. So, um, I added that real quick, but, uh, for you, you basically, obviously, it says that you can reuse it to re-roll any roll made with the hatchet. You already have the ability to do so. That is people that don't have access to it. However, the luck that is spewing off this weapon in particular, you can use that luck point as if it's any of your other luck points. It is just in this hatchet. You got one additional one that you can pop off the hatchet that only returns on short rest, but it's an additional last remaining luck point. It's also a pretty good at hatchet, you know. So. It is a pretty good hatchet. So feel free to add that to your like weapon section and just like put it in there and put like the plus two whatever. Just to go up. Alright. So did someone take the pistol? I think Dahi did, right? Or did you put it back? Uh I picked it up, but it's, like, out of ammo, so I put it back down. I shall grab it just in case. Boop. Never know. Ace is out here playing a RPG. <laughs> Picking up everything. But then at the final boss, he'll... He'll never use any of them. He'll collect 20 elixirs and then only use one throughout the course of the game. All right, I'm we're going to cut down here. I'm going to suffocate the uh, Chimera using the mats. All right, so you move in. It's a small little closet. It looks to be some sort of like inner closet in between both the rooms. In front of you is two kind of cabinets that are just, oddly enough, still filled with all sorts of chemi chemicals, etc., whatever you think would be needed for, you know, a science class to be able to do their experiments. Most of that probably should have either been discarded properly and not just left in an abandoned building. But there's a lot of it here. In particular, mm. this can be used, not necessarily by you, but just as the player at the large, it could be used to make certain things. So if you want to improvise, make like a bomb or something, you can do that as well. However, for one person in particular, there's enough materials in here to make six canisters, which is how Zack's character functions. Hmm. However, if you want to move the items in here, it will, you basically be considered over encumbered in quotes and have your movement set to five. Besides Zach, you have your heavy lifting, so you only suffer minus five instead. But you, your entire main action will be you carrying boxes of things. But that is in here for you to use if you decide to do it. Might be a good thing to come back to later. I'll tell them when I get back out into the hall. Boop. 
Yeah, you step into kind of more of an open lab, so it's kind of giant counters across the place. There's a lot of broken glass that just seem to be like beakers, etc., that was either knocked out over at some point. You're really not sure. I feel like this is going to make noise. He'll walk carefully over the broken glass. Give me a stealth check, you smart bastard, calling me out on my shit. <laughs> Who's in the hallway right now? Ilya, make me a perception check. Yeah, Very Amelia, weird. you immediately, you don't really see anything, but you immediately hear, A, first a clunt, like a, a crushing of glass as that crunch noise begins to kind of like echo. And you like look over there and then you hear another one of those screeches and start hearing just slow stomping coming in your direction. Can I slide inside the room I'm right next to now? <laughs> yeah, go for it. Boop. Oh, hey, welcome. I think it's coming, guys. Shit. Who stepped on glass? <laughs> I'm guessing the person that's not here. Corey sneezes. <laughs> you hear his sneeze echo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Corey's gonna get right here and, like, crouch down behind this table. Alright, so is the plan of everybody to basically stay I in here and wait for it to pass? I, um, real quick. Is this yes. like a counter sort of table like you'd see in labs, or is it like open, like... It is a counter. It, okay. It, you know, it has okay. like, you know, it's it's all the way down and around. Alright, then he'll crush down behind it. Yeah. Alright, so is the plan for everybody to basically hunker down as this thing passes? Yeah. I try to. Okay. Alright. So kind of place yourself where you're going to hide. Ian has already done that. And so give me those stealth checks. Where could Pembroke hide? I don't know. Like here, maybe? Just uh, awkwardly like middle of the room. knee down. <laughs> yeah. The nice. room's like <laughs> diving underneath the uh, desks, basically. Uh, he's just kind of like hiding behind one right. that has his revolver out. All right, minus two. <laughs> Look at that nat twenty I got. Ah, uh, damn dis disadvantage. I love how when we were taught. Oh ah, no, bugger! I know where that guy. I apparently just hit my leg against the desk and cursed out loud. Yeah, you're just. This is bad as Pembroke, who's actively not hiding, he's just got a, uh, his knee down. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Exposed. Okay. Alright, let me double check. The stomping very loud. becomes louder and louder. Echoing further and further, getting closer and louder with each and every step. Room to the north. I'm going to wake up somebody if I keep doing that. That hurt my hand. Um, a loud bang against the door. Again, another one. I'm going to have to stop that. I forgot how late it is. Use your imagination. Don't laugh at me. Again. And then I just slam my own fist against the... Right. <laughs> Someone read my visual... My, my, my audio. It's a slam for me. Alright. Bang. Fraser, you are hearing something slam against. It's almost sh rattling the the lockers around it as it's slamming into the door. All right, Fraser's doing something. Okay, it is it is not your door, by the way. You you probably can yeah. hear that it's the door across the yeah. hall. Yeah, yeah, he knows. 
he is going to run down this way across the glass, purposely making noise, and towards the closet. Okay. As soon as he walks over that glass, he's going to slow down a bit just so try to make sure he's not getting heard, like going towards the closet. Okay, so you're basically attempting to lure it towards you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. The banging stops. You hear steps slowly moving. Only for a moment it feels silent to a loud crashing noise is heard throughout the entire building. Lockers flown. As Fraser, as you look across there, the entire wall busts in as this large creature lets out a cry as it rushes into the room. You see its shadow moving down. It almost slows down at a pace now. You getting into that closet? <laughs> uh, yeah, he got in there as soon as he could. All right, pop in. Make me a stealth check. <sighs> hmm. You begin here. You. It's almost eerily silent. You sit in this closet and just waiting and hoping. And then just a loud bang against the closet door. And then another one. It rattles. It almost bends inward. Um. What are you doing? Can Corey kind of, like, knock this shelf over and move it towards the door? So, these are, like, high ceilings, by the way, so it's, like, 15-ish feet up. That one in particular is pretty much about, I would say, almost to, the like, the ceiling. Where, All like, right, you have to <laughs> So you can do it, and it would probably fall partially in front of the door. I would say just if you want to do something similar to it, you could move into the other room and maybe like shove some desk in front of that door. Yeah, it's just not even worth it at that point. He is going to try to go out the other door. Okay. Trying to move in like quick, like quickly, stealthily. What? It, how, how are you doing it exactly? Uh, stealthily. Okay, give me another stealth check. And I'm going to do something that I probably should be should have done earlier. Just remember not to meta game with this. I'm going to give everybody access to e control everyone. Just so people that are not, you know, Fraser can actively see what Fraser is doing. Huh. So you're not sitting in darkness as he's playing. <laughs> well, I see his token now. Yep. Is it still in darkness? Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yep. It, 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 it will refresh when he uh, moves. Yeah, he just needs to like move one tile. Yep. Now I can see. Yeah. Okay. He is slowly backing up with his assault rifle raised towards the closet. You hear a large crash on the other door. Something is clearly moving in that closet. But it doesn't seem to be slamming against the door again on your end. For right now, it seems to be right there. But who knows how long that'll last. All right, so... We'll be back to you, Fraser. We're going to go up here to see what mm. they're doing after the thing le left their door. You heard a loud crash in the hallway. Sounds like it might be after him. Yeah. What do we do? Yep. Milo 
of course, has his <laughs> hammer at the ready as he will go to open the door. Everybody's following? Yeah. Eat for a penny. And he will proceed towards where he heard the crash. Is this further down the hall? You haven't been yet. Oh, further left? Ah, yes. there it is. Everyone now can see through Amelia's amazing <laughs> eyesight. <laughs> Yo. Yeah, you, you see this you see this uh this entire kind of wall and doors just like caved in. It's a lot more open than the one you saw before. Yeah. Um as you hear yeah. another cr large crash in that room again, further down it. Yeah, he'll like lean up against this <laughs> locker and like kind of like, you know, look around the corner to see if he can spot anything in that room. Go ahead and roll a perception. All right. You hear a loud bang and you basically can see in the shadows more or less just that kind of the wall kind of caving in. As you see the, a large shadow kind of move through into what appears to be a small little like off. It might be the other room. It might be, you know, you, you have no idea that that's attached to the other. Yeah, room. But it seems to be clearly pursuing something. I have, a, I have a question. All right. Yes. We all have communicators, right? Mm-hmm. Does that make like a very does that make like a loud noise whenever um it goes off, or is it only in ear? For everybody but you, it's in air. But you, it's basically you imagine like a walkie-talkie. Like it's your voice is going to be heard, and it's going to make a noise you turning it on. But for the other people, they're safer. Because it's in their ear and it's not going to echo. So if they send you a message, you'll be you don't have to make the stealth check. The ones that do are the ones that are going to have to use the uh, the com or, that is using the communicator. <gasps> so, so you're aware. Yeah. Well, Pembroke is probably going to start making his way into the room because he actively thinks that. Uh, you know, there's like a small offshoot, but he's not sure if good old Cor or Frazier is actively in that room it's in. All right. For starter, with you doing that, you're moving through rubble. So mm -hmm. if you're going in stealthily, you're going to have to make a like a stealth check just to see how quiet no, you're able to move through the. He's not going to be going in stealth at this point he's actively trying to get to it to try to like distract it in some form or fashion to try to get it off of Frazier. all right so you're just stumbling in you immediately hear yeah. a cry and the shadow moves back into the room uh, you three to silently watch pembroke climb into the room kind of step over the rubble what do we do Ace mostly asks towards Dahi since she is basically second in command. Like, you see Dahi's just like pinching the bridge of his nose. And she's just like, uh, Amelia, cover him. See if you can get a good line of fire from out here. Uh, I'll Wait. go in after him. Wild card. Rack us up. Frazier, are you, you still are you still moving towards the door? Would Corey hear the thing, like, screech and move out of the closet? Yes, it is. It's fully pursuing its prey. It is not, like, trying to slowly sneak up towards it. It is running the other way. So you immediately hear the screech, and then just the stomping of feet going across the uh, room. Wait, okay. She... Um, yeah. Corey... Yeah, but I'll get back to you, Amelia. Let me see what... Corey's going to sprint to this closet door, like, while talking on his communicator, and he's just like, Run the other way, you dimwits! 
and you he's, all hear that in your ear. <laughs> he's gonna open up this door. Immediately, just no matter what's there, just firing a round through as soon as he opens the door. Is that a direct order? <laughs> it's Philo. No. Right, go ahead and give me the attack roll because you immediately see this creature's ass as it tries to slitter its way out of the uh, the rubble. I wish there was a clear way that I could remove the light of sight on the rubble itself. All right, so doesn't see this. Let's see if it gets through. For transparency, I should roll this on. The armor triggers. That is enough where you just hit it in its ass and it completely like turns around. Uh, so, so you see, it's right there. Yeah, you, you pop open the door and you just start firing into it and you kind of hit it and it kind of plinks off its thick skin as it slowly turns around from where it was beginning to pursue and just runs back through this at you. Hey, you big dumb man. You're closing the door behind you, I imagine. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah, you immediately feel, you see the kind of the door bend in and just snap. And it doesn't, it's still kind of holding it back, but it kind of opens up this crack and you look into it. And there's just a singular eye peering through. All right, what are, what are you guys doing after you hear that communication and you basically hear a gunshot? Uh, what, what do we do? Is that a direct order? Do oh, we just go? Simple. Uh, yeah, I believe the game's simple. We play keep away. Anyone that wants to try and have Frasier outrun or stall this thing is free to, but some of us should probably break off and try and find the civilian. It won't Agreed. be able to go after both of us at once. Milo will proceed to help play keep away as he walks up and just slams his hammer onto the, <laughs> the table. All right, so who, who's going down the hall? Okay. All right, troops, let's roll out. I'll stay and assist. Okay, uh, I'll poke you right in here. Okay. All right, so I'm going to go on the brick screen so I can... Uh, a, it's just to do a break. We've been going for a while, but also for me to allow you guys to see through the rubble. So we'll break, we'll do a few more things, and then we'll wrap up because we're kind of hitting close point. All right, we'll see how long this lasts, and that pretty much will determine how much time the other two have until further. If it takes too long, I'll cut back because who knows what happens on the end. But for, for right now, it will be up to you three. So the other two sprinting down the hall, you guys can see the uh, what they're doing, right? So you're not just sitting in darkness for a while. Yeah. Yeah. Good. All right. A loud hammer rings across. I am going to roll to see if it decides to go after you or stick to what it decided is the easier prey. All right. Wow. <laughs> You're an old man. Get over it. You need like a bite rage. <laughs> How do All right. Go after you know, give it to the old. I didn't understand a single word you said. You were cutting in and out with thrash. Okay, uh, call it high or low. High, like, it, which one do you do? You want high going after Pinbrook, or you want low going after Pinbrook? Uh, we'll go high going after Pinbrook. Nope. Oh. All right. I might have to get more aggressive. <laughs> Frazier, it slams into the door in front of you again, and it like bends open. It is barely on its hinges at this point, as a claw basically kind of reaches through trying to slash at you, but it gets stuck in the door itself. And next hit on this thing will shatter that door. Um, All right. I should move. Yeah, we're going to do popcorn, but you'll take the lead. All right. Uh, 
Oh, I I keep forgetting that I have uh, less movement with my uh, stuff on. Yes. You have four, right? Yeah. Um. Uh, is this still close enough to like get a shot off on its on the hole that's in the door now? Yeah, it's gonna have full cover, so it'll be minus four, I believe. But you can yeah, still dude. attempt. All right, that's fine. I'll still take a shot. And that is why I still take the shot. Well, that's unfortunate. Yeah, you, you just clip the door. I wish I could see what is being rolled, but roll 20 is just weird when I'm streaming it. Or, like, have OBS on I roll it. an 18. Yeah, sometimes it glitches out, but if you're clicked on the actual thing, it should fix itself. It does on my end, anyways, when I click on the actual roll 20. I don't know usually when I'm like on another monitor that it flips out. All right, who are you popcorning it to? Uh, Penbrook, I guess. Okay. Uh, let's see here. I don't actually know where this thing is. Um, you can clearly I... tell it's like down south here. It, like you, you can see shadows moving. You can hear the noises. So if um... you can visibly see it on your sheet, it's basically you're shooting blind. So your attack is at disadvantage. You think I'm shooting? <laughs> you I, attacking blind. Okay, you get my point. I was just doing that for everyone. But yeah, go ahead. What are you doing? Uh, I still can't see it. Uh, I do have one more movement, but it'd be on top of glass. There you go. It's right because of the wall. It's technically big enough where you oh, can see it. All right, let's see here. Since I can't actively get, you know, close enough to actively, you know, strike at it or anything like that, uh, can I study it? Um, talking about your like special thing? Yeah. Or my my uh, ability, eyeing up prey. Oh, yeah. Okay. I was like, what are you talking about, study? But yeah, I am up for it. Yeah. Go ahead and roll it. Uh, that would be a 13, which I don't think is enough to... No, it does not. That's yeah, 15. Yeah, it's just in the darkness. It's just kind of high, hard to kind of read what this is. But you can still do an inquiry roll on it. Yeah, I'll do an inquiry roll. It's investigator. Investigate or perception. I'm gonna investigate. That is not enough. Are you popcorning to it or Amelia? Uh, popcorn to Amelia, so that you know, she might be able to get its attention elsewhere. I'm assuming we we'll don't care about the glass here. anymore. I would have probably assume correct. <laughs> I can't tell. I'm assuming she can see it from there, like full sight. Yes, you can very vaguely see it. I know it's hard with multiple people, but I, I have the ability to do it. So if you ever need clarification. Are you shooting it? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go for a disabling shot at one of its hind legs. Let's go right. Plus two, that's only 12. It rolls just enough to kind of leap out of the way hearing your gunshot. gunshot. Okay. It's, it's go automatically. It's going to flip this way. All right. Let me roll for both of you. Hey, bud. Slamming its way into this counter, it's going to rush into you. It's going to activate Ragdoll. It does not. By the way, because you guys popcorned only to each other, it gets to go three times. Oh yeah, I forgot that it 
That's right. Probably would have been best to popcorn to it in between each go. Yeah. Now it is the goat's go. Let me see what it's going to do. So yeah, you you begin to see a bright light. It's just kind of pretty much brightens up the entire room. You can clearly see it, see everything around you, and then just a flame erupts towards you. All right, let's see here. That is a fourteen to dodge. I'm good at friend. dodging. Nope. No, I'm I'm not good at dodging. Okay. Uh, two wounds. Yes, you do not suffer any of the status effects. It rolled too poorly for that, but you are like pushed back as it just releases a entire flame at you. All right. Last action. It is going to with its snake tail. Let me see. Yep. Snake's going to reach out towards Amelia. Okay. Uh, that is a 13 coming at you, Amelia. It would be a dodge. You rolled enough. It goes to the fence. Yay! So you can really dodge out of the way as this gigantic snake tail just reaches out for you. Fangs out and just narrowly misses you as you kind of like duck out of the way it kind of slams into the counter behind you that's comforting all right i get to decide who goes first i'm gonna go fraser all righty uh... I can't tell if I can see it from here or not. Um, you very much can't because that door is blocking. And if you like open that door, by the way, I think you're gonna be cut from that wall. Uh, not from where I'm standing. I'm, I have it on a like I'm I'm moving and trying to see. Like uh, okay. from there. Oh yeah, you could do that. Go All right. and clean out. Uh, there I'll would go. probably be half cover on it because, yeah. Okay, then I'll I'll go here. It's a double move, but I All can rifle. still shoot with assault rifles. You slide in, flip your assault rifle around, and just pull it up and take a fire. The entire room lights up with the uh, bullet. You guys can clearly tell that he is alive. Probably could have done that with, you know, hearing him um, speak earlier, but. Uh, dodge, hit. I'll roll for his armor. It just plinks off his uh, thick skin. It does get its attention, though. All right, who are you popcorning to? The creature has three actions, by the way, so if you wait until the end, it will get all three actions in a row. Yep. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, what are we thinking here? So I will note it has a order that it goes through. It has to go lion, goat, snake. So if you popcorn it, it will go lion first. Um, I don't know. I will note if you guys ever want to retreat, just. It's a action to state, and it becomes like a skill check rather than you moving every five feet, and then it's moving to follow you. Do either so. of you want it, or should I get just get one of its turns out of the way? It'd probably be best to get one of its turns out of the way. Alrighty, I'll popcorn it to it. So, let me... Okay. Um... Yeah, you shoot it and kind of plinks off the skin. It does not even bother to turn towards you, and it's going to leap forward on towards Pembroke. It's going to attempt to do the thing it tried to do earlier. That's a that's well, a twenty-seven. Uh, yeah, I don't think I can beat that. <laughs> but I'll roll. Yep. No. 
Moral toughness for me. That, that's gonna do three to you. <laughs> so it Aww. leaps up, latches its fangs onto your body. You can feel it pierced in. It's just the blood being drawn. And it almost shakes you around like a ragdoll in his mouth and just throws you. Amelia, you see Pembroke get ragdolled over you, hit the top of this counter, and then roll slamming into the ground below. Uh, you also suffer six, so minus your fortitude by two. That uh, just does not matter. Okay. I mean, actually, it probably does, so I'll still add the sickness onto it. Alright. Like always, are you standing immediately up, or are you just gonna wait for the roll next round? Uh... I'll wait for the roll next round. Okay. Okay, I will popcorn to Amelia. Okay. Can I... Can Corey say something over the communicator, or do I need to wait till it comes back to him? But did you use your free action? I did not. Okay, go ahead and do that before Amelia takes her turn. As you see that happening, you basically just use your free action to pop on the communicator. Uh, Amelia, get him out of here. That's an order. I'll distract it the best I can. I don't even know if I can carry him. That's for us to find out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Enjoy. Okie dokie. <laughs> I guess I can slide across the top of the, or go under it. No, it's it's full down. It's like actual like counters. Yeah. It's not like up on thing, but you can slide over it. Um, it's not that high up, so I imagine you can just like roll and then roll over across to him. So what am I rolling here to try and grab him? Okay. So for most people, it's not that hard to get people out per se. But oh, however, the man in front of you is carrying a gigantic turret on his back, as well as his hammer. So you're going to have to make checks to get this guy out unless you just leave, I would say, like either the turret or the hammer behind just so that wait because it would be basically Amelia trying to drag like a like a hundred and eighty pound guy with an additional seventy pounds on him <laughs> he can come back and get his turret if he has uh, if we make it through this <laughs> okay I'm gonna roll something real quick okay I'm gonna plop his turret down here, so so we know where it is. Uh, how much movement you had? You had two, two, right? I think you had two left. So are you making your way to the door? I'll just put you dragging sure. your body. Okay. Oh, you still have your action actually. So oh. if you want to do something with your main action or dash, you can. My poor. I turret. guess I'll dash. Okay, so that would be three, four, five. That's that's not correct at all. You have two more, so you can get yeah. out. Yeah. And drag him out into the hallway. All right, who are you popcorning it to? It has to be him, I guess. Now that I think about it. No, you can you can popcorn to Milo. No, can you popcorn to Milo? However, he has to immediately make his like will check. I'm gonna have to make it at some point anyway. Yeah. I'll just wait on me to decide. Yeah, you can either yeah. popcorn it to the creature or him. I guess to him. Okay. That can be a check. That's not the worst that could happen. Uh, give me a 1d8. Oh, no, no. You suffer a minus one to your agility. Oh, that's actually not bad. Well... I say it's not bad. That actually does bring it down to minus three, but 
<laughs> it could be, look, if it would be anything, I <laughs> want it to be agility. What's your, your what, negative eight now on stealth checks? <laughs> no, just negative seven. Thank you. All right. So you would pop Cornet back to the creature. Uh, okay. <coughs> the goat has half movement, so it will kind of slam its way here, and you basically see its head creaking through the gap in the wall towards you. So its teeth, its fangs ready. Shit. All right, let me. It's going to attempt the snake. Doesn't. It kind of gets. It kind of flies its uh, fangs out towards you, and part of its body kind of smacks the top of the roof, and just the rubble kind of caves in more on it, and just kind of stops the snake from getting towards you. Kind of gets caught about a foot away from your face, just with its fangs open, trying to just force its way through the rubble itself. I will pop ga popcorn back to Fraser. <sighs> It, I can hit it there, right? Yes, this creature is like 15 feet tall. Yeah, it's over the uh, counters. Go for Alrighty, it. I'm shooting it with my shotgun. Heck yeah. Uh, That's the one that can sometimes be scary. Yeah. Right? Okay. That will be two wounds as you shotgun it in the back. It lets out a cry and immediately, like, turns towards you. Things ready. Five feet back, back. Just a reminder. Uh, doesn't work on this creature because yeah, it's that makes sense. It's large. Yeah, that, you know, <laughs> thinking you about it. At least, like, 10 to 15 feet of not back to push this thing back. All right, who are you popcorn into? Uh, oh, considering it's more on me right now, I'm gonna popcorn it to it. Okay. The lion will. Gonna, yep, gonna be right on top of you. Hey there. <laughs> and whoop. So the 17 and 16, you're gonna have to roll against. As all three of the creatures just bear into you. Parry, I'm assuming. Yes, for both the fangs and the horns. The one don't matter. You can not strike move. melee on that claws attack if you want to, but I don't know. Do so you you parry the fangs? I'm not striking back. That's fair. Wow, is the goat actually gonna hurt you? That's funny. Yeah, that's uh that's an eight different, so that would be three. You need seven. How are you this looking? Um, six wounds to me. I have eight one. injuries. Living, living on the high life, baby. <laughs> All right. So I will let you know what it ended up doing is it can do a thing where it attacks with all three that gives up all its actions. So I will popcorn to Amelia, and then it will be back to you again. And I imagine, and just just so I know, he's thoroughly distracted at this point. Are you escaping to the left, to the right? What, what's your plan here? I, I don't know. <laughs> you do know the other two went the other way. So you, it, it's up to you. You can always call them as well to, like, meet you up to help carry this man. <laughs> yeah, I'll radio to them to, okay. I guess. So I will count it as you moving down to the left if you're all right with that, so, so you can rendezvous, with, rendezvous, dear lord, with the other two. All right, Fraser. How are you, man? Uh, not looking too hot. Yeah. Um. 
Uh, it's main action to disengage, right? Yes. And I would still have my shift action? Yeah. Okay. So you would disengage as one, and then you would have five, or your four movement, actually. So what about retreating? So retreating? Retreating, typically, if you're in close core combat with something, you're going to have to make a roll. It's a higher likelihood of it hitting you, um, but it's more or less athletics or acrobatics check. It becomes a skill off to see if you're able to escape from this creature. So and there's it's a, a main action you... to call for retreat, right? Yeah. Um, so, because you're in close core combat, it will get a chance to basically, you know, there's a likelihood of you getting it. If you fail the rolls, more or less, it will catch up to wherever you're running. So either your options here are pretty much like having to disengage and run, and I don't think you can make it to the door, can you? No. That would, that would be main, and then it would be... No, I'd be right here. I'd be right here if I did it. Yeah. So, your your options is to do a retreat, which would be left up to like athletics or acrobatics, or you can just basically see if you can tank through the hit that he is attacking you, see if he rolls low enough for you to make it out by running. But, um... Oh, this is not good. This is just not good. So let me double check something. Uh, uh, okay. So, um, yeah, that's, that's your options. You can make a run for it. You can retreat. What action is it to drink from my flask? Just so I know. Probably free. Okay. I'm going to write it down just so I don't forget. Go ahead. On the uh, on the actual flask thing. All right. Ah. Uh. I don't get anything to that until fourth stage. I think my... I'm just gonna... I'm using main to disengage, and then I'm booking it. Actually. Uh, retreat, or is this running? Just, just running. Okay. Where are you going? <sighs> and... Okay. I'm gonna use my free action to take a swig at the flask. What a time! What a time! This was a choice. <laughs> this was a choice. Yeah. Alright. Popcorning it to it, I guess. Yeah. Alright, so let me let me double check something. I should have drank that earlier. What does it give you again? Uh that just put me to stage three, which gives me advantage on attack rolls. Okay. Hey there. All right, it's gonna rush forward at you. You'll attempt another claw attack. Damn. That's not a good roll for me. <laughs>
You don't have armor, right? No, I don't okay. believe so. There's nothing I can do. Okay, so... That does... Unfortunately, do enough to knock you down. In this case, there's multiple options that you have here. Just to put it out here. You can eat a memory to basically force that into a reroll or a check, whatever you want to do. Or you can you can basically if you I, I doubt you want to wait until the next round to see what this thing does to you. Or you can immediately just declare that you are taking a permanent injury to your character and you will stay up at a pure will. How that works is you can decide to take a minor, which sets you at two thirds of your maximum injuries, so you would ha go down to six, and suffer a minus one randomly rolled on a D8, or you can take a minus two randomly rolled on a D8 and be set to uh, one third of your max injuries. Uh, if I eat a memory, what does that set me to? So... So, eating a memory, there's two things you could do there. You could re-roll that toughness, or you can do passionate action, mm. which, based on which memory you pick, will give you a plus five to one of the things based on the memory that you use. So, you would have to do at least three to tough it out which depending on which memories i think it could it could be multiple it's ultimately up to if you want to eat a memory technically if you want to eat your new hobby that would count as two so that would give you a plus 10 i don't think you, the uh if you're curious about the stages let me look held by duct tape is three Broken Determination would be a one. Um, hobbies would be ten, and Crucial Moment would be a one. So you would either have to eat Held by Duct Tape, or you would have to eat two others. Or you can just take the permanent injury and then shut the door. Uh, um, shut the... I'm going to take the permanent injury. You taking a minor or a major? Just going to take the minor. Okay. So roll me a 1d8. This might hamper you or just make you, you know, three. That's not terrible. You suffer it sucks a for minus any... one to fighting permanently on your character. It sucks As for this... close combat, but that's not terrible. Yeah. As this creature reaches down and you put your hand up instinctively just to block, and its fangs just dig through your hand. It almost pierces all the way through. For a moment, your vision goes blurry as you pull your arms, just kind of completely ripped. It kind of falls limp to your side, and you just look up at this creature in front of you as it's continually bearing down into you. It's your go. Oh, I'm getting out of there. I'm closing the door behind me. So it's one. It's a disengage, and I imagine you're going to shift. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, I you have two options here. You can run for the door, and there's also windows here, but you're going to have to make a certain check to probably strength, however you go about breaking the, uh, breaking the boards that are on it. I will also remind you, you do have a Mega Donut on you that gives you advantage on strength checks. It also increases your strength by plus two. So if you, you could do that as an option to escape out that window. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna do that. I'm just gonna okay. brute force my way through the window. You pop in your mega donut? Yep. So two strength checks. You, I'll also go ahead and apply the plus two on it. Two strength checks? Yeah, because you're yep. rolling an advantage. Yeah. So 13, let me roll to see how well the door. <laughs> That's God bless. God bless that dice. The duck dice has spared you as you just brute put your one remaining hand up and just grab it 
just kind of doing everything you can to rip off. And so in this moment, the adrenaline pumping through your body, you rip a board off. You can see it bearing into the door, its face slowly making through, cracking, pushing, making its way out. And for a moment, you pull, you just continually, rapidly pull another board off. It slams, bursting through the door as you're able to pull the last board off slide it open and just die bomb through it Ugh. okay and with that i think that's a good place to call the session because it is getting kind of late that's a rough place to leave it but it's a place you're only missing an arm. Yeah. It's still there. It's just severely fucked. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't think there was anything else I could have done. No. I mean, maybe Honestly, retreating, yeah, retreating that first time might have saved me, but like still. It, it would have been down to yeah. reflex roll versus this thing. Yeah, and the room was so small that I couldn't really use the large rifle, so.